All right. So this is all about abstinence. You know, we're going always going to do this at least, you know, once a year. You know how it go. All right. We got to make sure that y'all know about this, you know, even though, you know, I know y'all don't ever get taught this in church because, you know, churches never talk about abstinence, especially when it comes to singles. They never talk about that. All right. So let's rock and roll. All right. So here's the first thing. Christian and Singles Connect links. Um, if you do not know, we do have a lot of links. We are all over the web. Um, we're trying to get a little bit more out there, but um, these are our links. So you can go out if you like some of the clothes that we have, um, even though Lakeisha does have, you know, people here in Atlanta. Um, she has shirts and stuff like that that she kind of walks with. We do have some, you know, basic ones out there that if you want to go out to shop, you can. And, uh, you know, get to some of our gear. And so when you pop up at one of the events, you can actually have a CSC shirt on. Um, our main YouTube is, like I said, right here. If you want to follow me, I do have my own YouTube. You're welcome to follow. You don't have to. Um, the main differences between the groups, I mean, those two videos is I go a little bit harder <laughs> in my videos um, than I do in the Christian Singles Connect stuff. So when, and when we hashtag, we almost always hashtag CS Connect 365 or CSC 365. Okay, so this is the message temperature. When I do something, I like to do a message temperature. Why? So you understand where the information is coming from. There are certain times when we will lean more toward lifestyle or the mind or emotion, um, and we might not lean as much into the word. Um, and that's important because Christians need to understand where the information is coming from so that they can make the decision on how they want to process said information. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about the mind and lifestyle simply because we are not just going to talk about abstinence from a Christian perspective, which is what usually you guys get. But I feel that um, and I'll be real, you know, that it doesn't always work well um, when it just goes in that direction because people need to be, um, you know, to me, a little bit more informed and also a little bit more realistic. And so we're going to go into that. So those that are not used to that. Again, if you feel, oh, well, you're not speaking godly and you and you guys aren't godly enough and blah, 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 because it has to be holy Jesus floating around, um, then this is not your group. Um, and we're not going to change our energy for you. All right. We've done well for the last three years um, doing it in the direction that I feel God has taken us. And I, I'm just being real. We, we're not going to change. It. So so you can go ahead and drop off now. We thank you for coming out. And we hope that you're blessed and that you find your group. All right. So um, with that, we're going to lead straight into the um, the CSC stances on abstinence. So before I even get going, I want you guys to kind of understand um, how CSC feels, what we have talked about as organizers and what we've dealt with over the last um, three years. So first, we will never, ever, ever um, encourage anybody to um, have premarital sex. We never will encourage you to have premarital sex. And we do, enc do encourage you to practice abstinence. That will always be our stance. However, we know that most of y'all ain't going to listen. <laughs> All right. We know that y'all horny little so-and-sos. All right. And y'all get to itching. So, you know, y'all want, y'all want to have what y'all want to have. OK, but our goal is to get you married and in a great relationship as quickly as possible so that you don't burn with lust and or you don't burn in the afterlife. All right. So we don't want you burning either way. OK, so that's why we do a lot of the stuff the way we do, um, because we do not want that. All right. However, and this is the trick. If we feel that you have taken advantage of anyone in the group by having sex too early or being one of these little sex hoppers, um, being a true wolf among the sheep, I don't care if you're a woman or a man, we will remove you. All right. And we've had some people in the past that have kind of nibbled at that. And, you know, they've had some conversations. All right. So we don't really play that. You know, we feel that if you're trying to have a relationship and you're hanging out with somebody for a couple of months and you guys have sex, that's on you. All right. But what's not going to happen is you go 
be with person A, you know, one week and then you with person B in the next week and then you with person C in the next week. No, nah, that ain't gonna happen. Okay, y'all grown and ain't a doggone thing we can do. Okay, but at the same time, we can make sure that, you know, you don't disrespect people in the group. And that's all we ever ask for is for you do not disrespect CSC. And I don't care how horny you get, how lustful you get, um, you can wait a week. Okay, and, or you can, you know, be with somebody for a month or whatever you're going to be. You don't have to go from person to person. Uh, we're not we're not going to ever allow for that. Okay, so now let's kind of get to it. So the first thing I want to talk about is the shift. Okay, the shift is something I've been talking to you guys about for a long time. In fact, I think the first time I talked about this was in September, October last year. Here is the reason why we're talking about shifting, 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 shifting. And almost every time you've heard from me over the last six to seven months, or actually close to nine months now, I've been talking about shifting, all right? And for those that have not watched that video, y'all need to go watch that video on YouTube. I'm not gonna go over it all the time, but I am going to make sure that you get this point. Why? Because God is moving. If you guys can't tell that God is moving right now in a very powerful way, you're asleep. You're literally mm -hmm. asleep at the wheel. I lived in a whole nother city, okay, uh, a week ago. And now I live in a new city. God, you know, we was talking about it earlier, um, you know, Stan brought it up, you know, that I'm about to get a new car, you know, within the next month or so. Okay, what else has happened in my life? God has given me a new job. So within the last, not even a year, I've gotten a new job, a new, a new apartment, and about to get a new car. Okay, what do we see what's happening in the world? The world is opening up again. The world is moving in a different direction. Things that were three years ago aren't working anymore. And everybody's panicking. Hollywood is panicking. We got two strikes right now. Okay, the world is shifting. And as it shifts, God, that is when God opens up the windows. The windows open in a shift. Okay. It's like a stock, it's like the stock market. When yeah. the stock market is going up, that's not when you invest. Yeah. You invest when it crashes. Yeah. Okay, but you wait a few seconds after the crash, and then as it starts to triculate back up, that's when you move. Yeah. And what I'm telling you right now is that that's what God has done. He has crashed the world. And now he is basically saying, this is your time to get your person and everything else I'm trying to give you. Your prayers that you have been asking for, for the last 5, 10, 15 years, I am going to deliver them to you, but I'm only going to deliver them to you if you're ready and you make the shift. And it's very important for you to understand that you need to make this shift because I'm telling you, for some of you guys, you won't get a second chance. And then you're going to stand before God and you're going to say, God, you promised me this. You promised me that. And what God is going to tell you, I gave you a shift. And I even gave um, the, the, the vision to a person that told you, but you sat on your butt and you didn't do anything in that shifting time. And therefore you missed out. And what we see in Numbers and in Deuteronomy, what we see is that the Israelites, it only took 11 days to go from Egypt into the promised land. But because they were not ready for the shift, because they moved back in fear, what happened was they lost it all. Mm. And you can see it right here when it says, those from 20 years upward have murmured against me. And therefore you will never, ever, ever go into the promised land. Only Jacob, I mean, I'm sorry, only Joshua and Caleb were able to go into the promised land and the children. All those other people that had prayed for years, they lost it because they were not ready for God's shift. And I'm telling you right now that we're in a shift. And what I've been trying to tell you to do um, is you need to go through all the stuff in your house. If you have pictures and memories from other boyfriends and, and husbands and wives, y'all need to get rid of that crap. There is a point where, yes, you, you have your memories, but then there's a point where, you're, where you know you will grab something and be like, 
Oh, so-and-so gave me this mouse. Oh, this mouse. I love this mouse because so-and-so <laughs> gave this to me. And I don't want to get rid of it. No, you need to get rid of it. Because when your person comes in, they're not coming in secondhand. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're coming in as a blessing from God. And God only gives good blessings to who? People who are good blessings within themselves. Okay, so you have to remove out. And it's painful, okay, to remove that stuff. But I'm telling you, if you don't do it, then your heart's not going to be ready for the person God's going to send you. And then you might say, well, God has sent me all these people. God has done this. A lot of the people that you might think God sends you is actually from the devil. Mm. OK, because the devil knows what you want. He knows what you like. But the mm. thing about it is when God sends you something it's going to be different because it comes with no cursing attached. It comes mm. with no bad things attached. Mm. OK, but the devil will send you a person that seems awesome. But then on the inside, they all crap. Preach it. Preach it. So I'm just letting y'all know that one of the first things y'all have to do is you got to go through your stuff. OK, and I don't care how long it takes. I don't care, you know, if you got to literally trash your whole house. You know, I threw away when God gave me this vision. I threw away seven boxes, boxes worth of stuff. And I recognized in this move that I didn't clean out enough. I needed another five boxes to go. So even right now, I'm working on getting rid of even more boxes worth of stuff. Now, again, this doesn't mean you got to get rid of everything. Okay, I'm not saying you got to clean out everything somebody gave you. It's about the emotions that you have placed on the object that the person gave you. Mm. Okay, and so if, you, if you're going to stop and think and say, oh, XYZ person gave me this, and we all do it. I'll give you an example. I, my mom gave me a little Taco Bell when Taco Bell had the little Chihuahua as a, low, as a mascot. My mom, before she passed away, gave it to me. And actually, under the bottom, it actually said, you know, from your mom. And that thing is worth literally a dollar, if it's worth that. But to me, it was worth $10,000 because my mama gave it to me. Yeah. All right. And so I'm sitting there, you know, as I'm cleaning out stuff and I'm saying, should I throw this away or should I keep it? And that's the point I'm trying to make. We all have things within our lives that they're worth nothing, but our emotions have attached to it. And so now they're worth everything. And if they are attached to a, a, a former person, you know, you're, like I said, like your um, like a, a husband, a wife, you know, ex-girlfriend, blah, blah, blah. You need to get rid of it. You need to get rid of it. All right. Um, the next thing you guys need to do is you need to take time for God. I cannot even, you know, get on you about this. This what God told me this man two years ago. And I know some of y'all still ain't doing this because he still reminded me of this. All right. You cannot believe that a God that you don't even pay attention to is going to pay attention to you in your time of need. God blesses everyone. There's natural blessings that just happen. OK, there's a natural ebb and flow. But the bottom line is the minimum, the minimum you can do every day is to read one um, Bible chapter. It is really I'm going to be honest with you. It's, it's, it's straight up disrespect. If a person can say, I've been a Christian for five years, but then you still ask that person, you say, hey, well, you know, have you read the Bible from cover to cover? And they're like, no, no, you know, no. If you read one Bible chapter every single day for three years, you will read the whole Bible. I mean, it is not a lie. You know, I've read the Bible cover to cover multiple times since I've been a Christian, and I can't believe I've done it, to be honest with you. But it really is just about reading one or two chapters a day. But you can at least read one chapter. Um, an another thing is you can spend three minutes um, of time of prayer. That is just, again, ridiculous if you can't do that. And you can listen to one Christian song 
and, and throw up a little bit of your heart in praise and worship. All right. And if you want to take it a step further, you need to start tithing if you don't do it. All right. I am not a this ain't no church. We don't pass around no bucket. I ain't getting a dime of your time. I'm not getting a dime of your offering. So if I'm telling you that you need to tithe and offer and I ain't getting none of that money. None of that money going to Tashawn, none of that money going to Lori, none of that money going to Kevin. Okay, none of that money going to Sean Williams. So if I'm telling you to do it, I get no benefit out of that. Okay, but I can tell you that I have watched God do more, as, as a lot of pastors will say, with 80% of my money than I was able to do with 100%. So you really do need to be tithing. And don't worry if, it, if, if, like I said, if you feel like it's going to a bad place, change churches. I don't. Change churches. Okay, but don't sit around and, and play around with God. Okay, yeah, just don't. Because I'm just telling you, it's, it's not going to go well for you. All right, so let's get into it. All right, so now that that's that's catching everybody up to where we are. To what CSC has been pushing for the last, you know, two to three years. So now let's get into what I know y'all really want to get into, abstinence, because y'all all want to be abstinent. I know none of y'all want to have sex. I know that, right? I know that. So let's get into it. So let's, def let's define it first, because we can't go nowhere. We don't have no definition. All right. So abstinence is a self-informed, enforced, I'm sorry, restraint from indulging in bodily activities that are widely experienced as giving pleasure. Most frequently, the term refers to sexual abstinence, but it can also mean abstinence from alcohol, drugs, food, et cetera. So when we say abstinence, what we mean is you are doing your best right now to restrain yourself from having sex, all right? That's what we mean. So don't people don't be coming in, you know, with different definitions later on, and then we're getting all confused, and it takes five hours to try to figure out, you know, <laughs> what the other person is saying. We need to all line up with the same definition, you know, so we can, you know, move forward. All right, abstinence and celibacy are two totally different things. Um, we had another meeting with Tashawn when she did this, and everybody was going crazy over those two different definition. So we want to make sure that we're all saying the same thing. All right. So what is God's view on it? So this comes from 1 Thessalonians 4 um, verses 1 through 8. And I did paraphrase some of this to make this a little bit easier for us to understand. Finally, we need to live in a way that Jesus wants you to. All right. So God's will is for you to be holy. So stay away from all sexual sin. Then each of you will control his own body and live in holiness and honor, not in lustful passion like the rest of society who do not care about God. God has called us to live holy lives, not impure lives. Therefore, anyone who refuses to live by these rules is not disobeying human teaching, but is rejecting God who gives his Holy Spirit to you. All right. So anytime, basically what this is saying, and this is preaching to me, too. All right. It's preaching to me, too, is basically saying when we 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 get down and get busy and we say, oh, this don't matter and blah, 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 blah. We are rejecting God. OK, and that's not good. All right. Um, it really is not good, but I get it. And that's why we're going to talk about it. Right. I get it. Trust me, I get it. Okay, so who is really doing it? <laughs> well, let's be real. Who's doing it is a whole lot of folks. All right, depending upon, you know, when we're talking about, you know, I'm not going to go into all the details on all of this charting that you can see. But basically what it says is that um, over 50% of Christians Based off this poll, the Pew poll in 2019, 
Um, over 50% of Christians believe that if you are in a committed relationship, it is nothing really wrong with having sex. That's basically what it's saying. And I've even heard of people saying this up to 90%, depending upon which poll you're listening to or you're watching. And this is one of the problems when it comes to dating as a Christian, if we want to stay Christian, if we want to do um, everything right. This is when you have a lot of Christian women who are complaining, saying, I can't find a man who, um, you know, who wants to, you know, not, you know, who basically wants to be abstinent. So there's always these issues, you know, and honestly, and I'm going to be real again for a second, is that I hear a lot of women complain, but I don't think a lot of women hear the men complain because we've taught, we've been taught as men, um, as a culture, not to complain. Okay, so a lot of times when men are not complaining, it doesn't mean they're not going through the same thing. It just simply means that we've been taught not to complain. In fact, I will give you the argument, and I'm going to be real with you, that uh, for a lot of Christian men, because I've done it, I've been in situations where I've done both things. And when I've basically had more of an energy of, well, I'm not going to have sex with you. I really want to stay abstinent. I've had women not return my phone calls. You know, they're done with me. And these are women, when I met them, they were all about Jesus. They were all up in the church. They was in this organization, that organization. But what they were looking for from me is an excuse so that they could have sex and then be like, well, it was because he, he really wanted it. So these were women who lost attraction to me, toward me, because I was just like, well, I don't want to do it. But then when I would be around Christian women and I'm like, well, you know, we do it, we do it. If it happens, it happens. But I'm not in no rush or anything like that. Never had no problem keeping a Christian. Mm. So all these women are saying all these men, it's, it's the men, it's the men. What I've learned from being in Christian Singles Connect and talking to both men and women for three years is that almost every single complaint that women have, men have the same complaint. It's just that. We, we've been taught as men to keep it quiet. And because we've been keeping it quiet, um, women just act like it doesn't affect men. All right. So um, I do think that there are a lot of men out here to, who want to stay pure, um, who want to do the right thing. And I'll be honest with you. I think there's a lot of men out here that maybe if you leave them at their at their natural way, they probably will have sex. But if you come in and say, as a woman, and say, hey, I want to be abstinent, they're probably thinking, oh, praise God. Praise God. She wants to be abstinent. <laughs> now, now I don't have to think about it. Now I don't have to worry about it. Um, but I will say, and this is the key element, because, again, we've talked about this a couple of times in CSC, is that if you are a woman and the guy really doesn't want to be abstinent, he doesn't want to be abstinent. If you are still what he's looking for, he'll wait. I think we 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 as a as a group, as an understanding of people, we need to understand that a lot of people are missing out, not because of their stance on abstinence. They're missing out because they really aren't kind of what the person wanted. And it's a it's a good thing to kind of weed out people that um, that really don't want you. They just kind of hanging out. All right. And we all do it. Men do it. Women do it because loneliness is a big problem. And so we all kind of do. it. But anyway, let's move on. All right. So why don't we wait? Why is the people? Why don't we wait? Well, first of all, I'm going to be real with you. I don't care what you've ever heard, but I've heard a couple of pastors talk about this. Sex is blessed. All right. Sex is blessed. Even think about it like this. How many people that you know who basically were fooling around before they had kids? I mean, fooling around before they got married and they had kids. And not only did they have kids, they had healthy kids, strong kids. But then you will find people who are married and they, their kids got all types of problems. Mm -hmm. Well, sex is blessed. No matter what the situation is, sex is blessed. It's always blessed. There's no curse upon sex because God wants grandchildren. And there is just something 
that sits upon sex that always makes it work. The baby is always wanted by God. Okay, no matter what the situation is, the baby is wanted because God sees the life of that child. All right, so there's a blessing on sex. And it's one of the things that we feel that's different. Like there are things that we go through in life. Like you might go, let's say for instance, you might be going into a, a party and then all of a sudden, as soon as you walk in, something just doesn't fit right in your spirit. Mm. You like, you know, this place feels weird. I, I don't know. I don't feel comfortable here. And you don't even know why. And you got to go. But sex never feels like that. See, once you're comfortable with the person, sex never feels like that. So it's always blessed. All right. And it's natural. It's like one of the things that we see with um, things like uh, anorexia and bulimia, and not to, to degrade those things, but eating is natural. It's something that we have to have, right? So um, it's very hard for anorexics and bulimics to deal with it because food, eating food is natural, right? So it's the same thing with sex. Sex is natural. So that's another reason why it, it, it's hard because it's natural. It's a natural occurrence between a man and a woman. And if you've had sex before, it's really hard. Okay? So that is the first one. The next one is part of attraction is sexual attraction. Mm. I have heard, I've talked to so many, again, CSC has opened me up to so many different people. And we have had women who have come to this group who are prophetesses, women who are pastors, Women who have been in all types of different places for God and almost every single woman, when I've talked to them about sexual attraction, all of them have told me, they're like, Jay, if I basically cannot see in my head having sex with that dude, I'm not talking to him. Mm. So basically, by the time a woman has gone on the second date, she has already seen whether or not she can have sex with you. And these are women who are holy by God. God is sitting upon them. God is walking with them. And they are basically saying, look, if I don't want that booty, then mm -mm, it ain't going to work. All right. And we need to understand that because this is one of those places. And I'm kind of getting ahead of myself here a little bit. But this is one of those places where, unfortunately, a lot of Christians try to hide. They try to hide under this thing where they don't want to be sexually attracted. But we find that we got to be sexually attractive out here just to get the person. But then we have this other part of it where there's a sexual attraction to the person. And then that is part of the reason why we want to talk to them. Because at the end of the day, we all want the booty. We want the other person's booty. That's just what it is. All right. So one of the reasons for relationship, okay, marriage is sexual freedom. So we all want to be free sexually. Why? It's just like eating. Like I said before, what if you can, you can only, you can never eat hamburgers and pizza. I told you, you cannot eat hamburgers and pizza. You can eat anything else, but you cannot eat hamburgers and pizza. What's going to happen? Immediately, you're going you're gonna to want hamburgers and pizza. It's just like Adam and Eve in the garden. They can eat everything except for these two trees. And what do they do? They eat the tree they can't have. Okay, so um, sexual freedom is one of the things that we all want. We want that sexual freedom, but the only way we're truly going to get it is in marriage. All right. The next thing, which everybody knows, but well, not everybody, but I should say most people should know, is that sex feels good. It should feel good. Um, if if sex does not feel good to you, and you've had sex before, I do um, encourage you to get therapy. All right. Um, you need to get therapy because something might be going on. Maybe something happened in your earlier years where you can't, you know, get that out of your mind. But for most people, 99%, uh, 99 percent of people, sex feels good. It feels great. It's actually like a high. It's supposed to be the best high that you can have. OK, so sex feels good. It's another reason why we don't wait. Um, singles are lonely. OK, we're lonely. And sex is a connection. You connect when you have sex, all right? Um, and, you know, let's be real. A lot of us are sexually deprived. Um, I used to tell people all the time, one of the things that I've noticed 
about singles is that when you look at the love languages, per se, most singles have as a love language touch. It might not always be touch, but right now it's touch. Why? Because everybody on this call, we ain't getting touched. I mean, you don't even get to hold hands with nobody. Forget anything else. So when you got somebody in front of you and they're willing to do a lot more than just touch your hand, um, you're lonely, you're, you're, you're sexually deprived. And I'll be real, you know, we as people, God made us for sex. I'm just I'm trying to be real about it. So these are reasons why we don't wait, okay? And then again, we're going through the motions. You get with somebody and then you're hanging out and your body, it's almost like your body just does it on its own. Okay, you kiss a little while, then you go for the neck, then you go for the ear, then you go for this and you go for that. And before you know it, it's like, it's just a happen. You don't even recognize it because you, you and once you've gone through it a couple of times, it's just like riding a bike. All right. So these are the reasons why we don't wait. Uh, we have these issues of not waiting. OK, but here are the issues when you move too fast. OK, so definitely do not encourage people to move too fast. And what we really are trying to encourage is for you to wait. Right. So loneliness. So you notice that loneliness was on this other one. OK, uh, but then it's also on this one. Why? Because what happens, excuse me, what happens is. When you get with somebody, right, when you when you get with these person, you're dating that person and you're starting to have sex. Right. Excuse me, you're emotionally connecting through sex. Sex is an emotional connection. It is a spiritual connection, whether you understand it or not, it's a spiritual connection. So now you are connecting with this person. But if everything in that person is not ready yet, if you if you don't have the same mental, if you don't have the same goals, if you if you if you're not really married, you're not on the same path. So these paths could, could diverge at, at some time. So now you're connecting yourself to somebody. Um, not even knowing about a divergent that's coming later. So now let's say a month goes by and you guys actually diverge. Well, you're going to actually feel more lonely once you diverge than you would have if you had never connected. See, the connection builds that extra load of pain. So when you're breaking apart, you feel worse than you would have if you had just left it alone. Okay, I, again, I'm just going to be real for a second. If I did anything with a woman, anything, where a part of her clothes came off. <laughs> um, and then I was like, well, I don't think this is going to work out. Um, it was always worse. But if we just hung out, if we just talked, if we just went for walks, blah, 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 and then we diverged, she was cool. She was like, okay, well, you know, I can see it too. We, we kind of really weren't made for each other. And then we just move on. So there's always that extra that happens, okay? The next thing is unwanted children. I know a lot of people in CSC, you know, are over 40, but there's a lot of people in CSC under 40. Um, there's a lot of people who still are trying to create their children. And when you have unwanted children, you create a different type of generational curse. And I have seen it in my friends. I've seen it in situations where men, uh, I mean, where children are become the babysitter of their si of siblings because they were the unwanted child. And so now they are in a situation where they go back and forth between two houses. Their mom is married to another man. Their dad is married to another woman. The mom has two kids over here. The dad has two kids over here. And now they they know that they're the unwanted child. All the arguments over, you know, over child support and over this and over that. And meanwhile, as the parents are dealing with this, dealing with their own problems, they're creating a curse that is sitting upon that child. They basically put something in them that can take three and four generations to remove. All right? So this is one, another issue of moving too fast. Also, just bodily damage, whether you're getting a disease that could last you for the rest of your life, or you're even getting abortions. Like for women that, you know, on the call that are a little bit younger, getting abortions, too many abortions can do damage. In fact, I've heard, I've talked to two women 
who have had over two abortions. One girl had three abortions, one had two abortions. And both of them told me, they were like, I can never get another abortion. Because the, the, the doctors have told me if I get another one, I'll probably never be able to have children. So abortion does damage to the body. The human body was not meant to, to abort. The female body was meant to bring forth life. And if you constantly are putting damage in your, in your womb, your womb will lose its ability to produce. All right. Okay, also learning too much. You know, there is a beauty to ignorance. Okay, because when you, like for instance, well, again, again, I'm not trying to be graphic, but I'm trying to be realistic. Okay, we try to be realistic on CSC. So if you are a man, I'm gonna use it from a man's perspective. Um, if you're a man and you and you dating a woman, and you know, this is the only woman you've ever been with. So she takes her shirt off and she has, you know, her breasts or whatever. And um, these are the only breasts you've ever seen. As soon as you see those breasts, they're perfect. They're perfect because they're the only ones you've ever seen. But as you go from woman to woman to woman to woman to woman, now you start to say, well, you know, I kind of like so-and-so's breasts a little bit better than this chick's breasts. And I like this girl a little bit better than this breast. So what ends up happening is you start to get too much crap in your head. Then you find a really great woman who has everything, but then the first time she takes her shirt off, you kind of like, uh, but I don't really like your breast though. And so now in your brain, you're battling this thing that you would have never had to battle if you had just been ignorant. So there is a place where it is better to be ignorant. And it's the same thing for women. Women can do the same thing. You know, you get to the point where this guy, he did it this way, and you kind of liked it better this way than this guy over here. But see, you would have never known that. The first guy, if you had just stayed with him, he would have done it perfect. And, and the great thing about it is the way God has made us, time, as people have said, heals all wounds. So the longer you're away from people, the more you forget, <laughs> you know, how that person was and how that energy was. You kind of in the back of your mind, you're like, well, I think they were a little bit better. But then you're like, well, dang, that was like 10 years ago. So I'm, yeah, I'm kind of, I don't, mm. So it allows you to be free again. So ignorance is bliss, all right? Um, then you miss opportunities with your forever person. Because there's just there's just things that are going to happen, um, you know, that, okay, again, I'm, I'm trying to be real without being too, too crazy. So say, for instance, if one of you decides to do something silly, um, you know, in that sexual event, in a sexual event, and um, I don't know, I'm trying to think of something that won't be too crazy, but, but I'm going to let you use your imagination. So. Um, you do that, and then you can share that with that one person. You know, that's y'all's little inside joke. But if you move on from that person, then your next person, you can't do the same thing with them because now it, it becomes weird. So you really want to have all the fun, all the silliness, all the craziness with your forever person, not just with everybody. And they had a, actually had a guy, and he was on. Uh, what is it? Uh, Meet me at the altar. What is it? What is that? Y'all know what I'm talking about. It's a TV show. Uh, Married at first sight. So, and um, the guy, it was really interesting and on Married at first sight, but he was a perfect example. He had had so many sexual partners that nothing really surprised him or got him excited, you know, sexually. He was just kind of like, meh. I mean, you really had to jump over like 10 hurdles to get him sex, you know, sexually attracted and sexually aroused because he had, you know, used, you know, one woman got a little bit of this, this other woman he did a little creativity with, this other woman did a little creativity with. So by the time they had paired him up with this one woman, and she was great in so many different ways, but in his mind, because it wasn't as creative as some of the stuff he had done in the past, and 
all this other kind of stuff, it was just messing with him. And so he was trying to get her to go from zero to 100. And she was basically like, I just want to be where I'm having normal basic sex first. So again, you're missing out on opportunities with your forever person. Your opportunities, you should want to do these things with your forever person, not with every little person that comes through. All right, so these are all different issues of moving too fast. Okay, so here's a quick note on soul ties because um, I really don't even like using the term soul ties because I think people in the church, again, they don't really dive deep, okay? So here's the whole thing about soul ties. You can obtain a soul tie with anybody that you are emotionally attracted to, connected with, all right? Um, not just people you're sexually attracted to. And, you know, and on top of that, masturbation can create soul ties. In fact, it's, it's usually when most of the soul ties begin. So what does it happen? Man meets woman, woman meets man, y'all go out, you go out two or three times, y'all like each other, and the next thing y'all know, y'all masturbate and thinking about the other person. As soon as you do that, you're starting to create the soul tie. Okay, way before y'all ever had sex. Okay, because it's more about a mental place than it is with anything else. And then even if you don't, you know, masturbate thinking about the person, even if you're just connected with them for a long period of time, again, you can create a soul tie with that person. Because, I mean, because in real, in reality, the way a soul tie truly works, if people really want to be balanced, have a balanced approach, again, I feel like the church, you know, to some degree, they like to brainwash in a certain direction. But anybody that you know, you actually have a soul tie to. So we all understand this because you'll be sitting in your house and you'll be thinking about, huh, I ain't talked to, uh, to John in a long time. I probably should get him a call. And then the next thing you know, 15 minutes later, an hour later, your phone rings. And who's on the phone? It's John. How did that happen? Because you was thinking about him. He was thinking about you. Boom, 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 boom. Y'all connected. OK, so what is that? That's a spiritual tie. You're tied to that person. Now, when you have sex with a person, it's even a deeper time. It's deeper than even that. So the beginning of soul ties just begins as soon as you know someone, you're connected to that person, you spend time with that person. But when you have sex with it, it's like you're multiplying it times 10. All right? But we can see the evidence of these things in our normal life. Right. So I don't want people to get too crazy on soul ties, because if you think about somebody long enough, you can have a tie with them. All right. If you think about anybody long enough and you spend time, you know, that's why the Bible even talks about meditate on the word. So you'll have a connection to the word. So you have a connection to God. All right. So here are reasons to wait that you may not have considered. OK. And the number one is just a stronger connection with your with your person. OK, I would hope that when I find my person that I could be sitting in the house and I could be thinking, man, I want some chocolate chip cookies. Man, I would just love to have some chocolate chip cookies. And then when my person walk in the door, they got some chocolate chip cookies. OK, because that's how soul ties work. Um, I've had, like I said, I was married before and I could get up in the morning and all that was happening. Even going through my divorce, it was funny because we would, I would go to Publix and buy something and she would go to Publix and buy something. And then we would find out we both bought the same thing. You know, that's a soul tie. That's, that's, how, that, that's, a, that's how strong that soul tie can be. Where the other person doesn't even know why they're doing something. They're just doing it because you really are one, not two. So you want the strongest connection to your spouse. And like I say, the more you have sex with other people, the more you're losing the connection you can have with your person. And you really want your person to be the strongest connection that you can have. Again, a lot of people, again, lean on this concept of, well, you know, you're not pleasing God and you're doing this and, and, and you blah, 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 blah. And, and the church loves to lean on those things. But I'm trying to get you guys to think outside of that. Uh, see the bigger blessing. Um, that you can have. And one of them is to have a strong connection. Like I really want to have that connection where me and my spouse are just really enjoying life. We're really 
you know, almost in that best friend category. And I know, you know, Tashawn, we, we talk about cleave mates over here and that your and your person doesn't have to be your um, best friend. But what I want is the strongest connection I can have. Right. So uh, for children, for those who are who want children like me, um, you want to have children that you want. And they don't start off in a curse. You want them to start off blessed. All right. And children, no matter what people say, you know, people have done a million billion studies and it's always dependent upon the, 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 <laughs> the personality of the person that's doing the study. But what we see and if we spend when we start paying attention to the Bible is that, you know, if at all possible, children generally do a little bit better when they have both parents. That they're like, yeah, we wanted you. You know, we, we really wanted you. We, we tried for you. We worked for you. Not to say that, you know, people can't get outside of that. Don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to disrespect anybody or hurt anybody's feelings. But I'm just trying to say we want to create generational blessing, okay, and try to minimize um, the other things. Also, sexual explorations. Um, you know, when you have your person, you can feel comfortable. And so it's a little bit easier to get into that place of um, sexual exploration. Um, and then also, like I say, memories with your forever person, um, because you want to have those memories with that person so that you can talk to that person about it. So you can joke with them about it. Be like, girl, you remember the other day when you did what you did? Girl, mm, mm, I couldn't even believe you did what you did. See, when you when you did that with girl, you know, if I did that with girl A, but then I married girl B, I can't never tell, you know, my wife about what I did with girl A. She ain't gonna want to hear that. So I can't even joke about it. I can't bring it up. I can't, you know, it's, it's like a, it's like a dead memory. It's like, you know, where you think you're going crazy. I'm almost like, well, did that really happen? Because I don't even have no proof that that really happened because I don't even have another person that can amen. So you want to have memories with your forever person, right? And other people will just simply distract from your forever partnership. Okay, so here's what the church wants. So if y'all know me, um, I'm not anti-church. I love the church. I even encouraged y'all earlier to tithe. You should be tithing. All right? Tithing offering is good. However, there's a lot of times that the church is trying to protect people. They're generally trying to protect women. Um, and girls, but eh, we we don't we don't do that over here. Okay, we talk real over here because we need to solve some issues, and we've talked about some of this stuff before, but we're gonna bring it up again. So here's what the church will not say about abstinence. Okay, there are lots of people who hide behind abstinence because they've been sexually harmed, they're confused, or they have a low sex drive. One of the things that I've learned about people, and this is both for men and women, this is um, a yellow flag for men and women to look for, is that if you're dating someone and they don't seem like they want you, they don't seem like they want you sexually, um, that is a yellow flag that should pop up. What does this mean? This means that if I'm sitting in my house and you know, girl I'm dating is with me and me and her are kissing on the couch, and then I'm just kind of like, ooh, girl, you know, you you starting to get, and I'm like, uh, get off me, get off me, get over there, get over to the other side of the room. You know, if I'm not like that, there's a problem. There is an absolute problem, you know, and I'll be real because I'm not trying to disrespect anybody, but I'm trying to let y'all understand. You know, I've had situations where I have been with a woman and I am literally pushing her off and she's pushing me off. Like we literally have our hands on each other's chest, like stomach and saying like, you, you, you got to go home. You got to go home now <laughs> um, because the attraction was that strong. But if you can hang out with somebody and they're not really attracted, they don't really want to kiss you. They don't want to hug you. They don't want to hold your hand. Um, they don't want to touch you on your butt. You know, they don't want to whatever it is. That person don't want you. OK. And, and they will hide behind absence. Well, I'll feel different once I'm married. No, you won't. You have a low sex drive and you need to, to think about that. Okay. Um, and as you guys are dating, you can't, you can't really deal with people who are, um, you know, have not done therapy and other things like that. 
in order to get because what happens too much is that people get married and then they they're in a situation where the person you know really just doesn't want to have sex and now you know one of the people is frustrated and there are women out there that want sex every day and there are men out there that want sex every day okay so we can't say oh well the men just wanted too much and us women no 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 we have gone over this a million times in CSC, there's very few differences between men and women. Do not believe the social hype that's in the world. There's very few differences between men and women. So there are men out here that want it every day, twice a day. And there are women out here that want it every day, three times a day. All right. So we're not going to play that game. All right. So that is the first thing. You have to really watch for people who hide behind abstinence. The person should want you. They should want you bad, almost like they're a drug, they're a drug addict. Okay. Um, again, the second one: those who don't enjoy or think they will enjoy sex really should uh, reconsider marriage. You should. I mean, I'm sorry. You should just reconsider it. There's a lot of people who, in in our history, um, because of certain things, they just didn't get married. Because I'm gonna be real. What, what's the difference between me? Um, I can see Shannara, so I'm gonna pick on Shannara. Um, me and Shannara being friends, okay, and me and Shannara being married, okay. And I'm gonna tell you straight up, the, the number one difference is sex. That's it. That, that's the number one difference. Because I can hang out with Shannara all day. Um, you know, she could be dating Stan. I can see Stan. She could be dating Stan, and I can hang out with Shannara all day. He wouldn't care. Nobody would care. You know, the church won't care. God won't care. But as soon as I have sex with her, it's all over. It's all over. At that point, everybody cares. Okay? So marriage, a good portion of marriage is about sex. Okay? So don't play these games, um, men and women, who really, y'all don't want sex. Y'all really know your heart. You don't want sex. Okay? You need to find somebody with a low sex drive just like you. Okay, and be real with it. Okay, um, healthy sex drive means you're attracted to the opposite gender's body and want to enjoy it sexually and often. Uh, it is really important for this because, I've, again, I've talked to women. Um, there's evidently more women in the group than men, but I know men have gone through this as well. But I've talked to women, you know, that have been like, uh, my ex-husband or my boyfriend, they don't never want to have sex with me. And I don't know. Do guys just not want to have sex? Is it normal to have sex once a week? Is it normal to have sex once a month? Is it, you know, is it normal to have? And I'm like, boo, it is normal for a man to jump on you about every other day, if not every day. And there are a lot of people who, I can say, they just don't want the person. You know, you got people, you know, we're here in Atlanta. I love y'all. But there's a lot of men that are, you know, they 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 undercover. And ladies, that's a really great way for you to know if they undercover because they should want you. They should want you all the time. OK, so if the person don't want your body, um, then. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And I will say this makes it hard. I know it makes it hard. But we want to make sure that when y'all get married, everything is cool because then y'all just going to get a divorce. You're going to be back out here and it's going to be even worse. Right. So we don't want you to go through all that. Right. So here's the next thing. The marriage bed is undefiled. So what does this mean? All oh, y'all super Christian. We got to play by the rules. Only missionary style. That is bull garbage. OK, the marriage bed is undefiled. Be as creative and as fun as you can possibly be. You know, if, in fact, it ain't just the marriage bed. It is the marriage house. OK, I, I personally believe that every single place in your house needs to be anointed with you. All right. So that is when you're married, not when you're dating. But I want you guys to have a mindset of freedom. God sees you as free. He wants you free. Okay, so don't get caught up. Now, here's the, here's the, here's a caveat to that. Do not bring into your marriage bed anything 
that is alive besides your person. That, that's the easiest way to see it. Don't bring in anything that is alive. So it's not, not another man, not another woman, no animals, no plants. Okay, so if it's alive, leave it alone. No threesomes, no uh, swapping people, no, um, oh, you know, all this kind of stuff. Mm -mm, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, but you can do all the lingerie, candles. Y'all want to do whips, handcuffs. If y'all want to do, I don't give a flip. Okay, y'all have fun. Okay, just come up with y'all's things called safe word. <laughs> Come up with your safe word and, and knock it out. All right. And here's the last thing, which is, is kind of funny, but I did see this. And I noticed this. Those who wait, believe it or not, they get married faster. And it's logical. It really is logical. Because the desire for sex is so strong that when you find a person you, you really kind of like, you're not going to be like, well, you know, I wait. Blah, 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 blah. You're going to be like, no, nah, no, nah, we got to go because, you know, I, I got to get me some. And I've noticed that, like, we have, you know, a young lady in CSC, and, you know, she made it clear very from the very beginning that, you know, she was looking for her man. You know, she was this, she was that. And, but she was going to be absent. She said, I'm, I'm going to be absent. Um, I'm not playing them games. I mean, I kid you not, from the time she met her guy to the time they was married, I don't even think it was a year. I think it was like 11 months. And I ran into another guy. There's a there's a guy that pops up every time, every once in a while on this group. His name is Robert, and he has a whole course on um, on abstinence. And I actually went to one of his meetings, and there was actually a couple there that uh, said pretty much the same thing. They said that when they started to date, from the time they started dating to the time they were married, I think it was like 13 months. And I noticed very quickly that people who um are abstinent oh they, they they get married they're not playing these games they're not out here in these streets <laughs> they're trying to make it work they're they trying to move fast and that's not to say that you cannot pay attention to your person and i want to make sure i put a, a big old period exclamation part don't be so quick that you're not really thinking about who this person is what they can offer you you know, what, what you can offer them, whether or not you're compatible, blah, 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 right? Um, because we want to make sure that um, you find a good person and you're not moving so fast that, you know, you're not paying attention to who, you know, the person in front of you is. Um, and just another, you know, and again, on that, uh, ladies, 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 uh, again, always remember that just because um, you know, you're dealing with, um, you know, men in the church, because a lot of people think men in the church are, um, you know, whatever when it comes to uh, sex. I'm going to tell y'all straight up, a lot of a lot of people on there, there's Jocelyn shaking her head. A lot of guys in the church, many of them have twice the sex drive. I think it's an anointing, you know, because God likes kids. So a lot of guys in the church got twice the sex drive. You know, I actually read about this um, this uh, this deacon's wife who was frustrated because her husband wanted it twice a day. And she thought once he turned 50, it was going to stop, but it never stopped. Yeah, he, he wanted it twice a day, every day through their through they whole, whole marriage. And she was getting frustrated. <laughs> you know, and again, I just think that there's an anointing on the men of God. So I'm just letting y'all know. That you know, you try to date some of these men of God, you're gonna get worked out. So, you know, you better be ready for that. Anyway, I am done with all my stuff. I am done. So now we can talk and talk and talk. And y'all know for all the people that's hung out, that's what we do. We love to talk. All right. Okay. Okay. So, Liz, okay. We all blur. We, we Every time we put the recordings up, we blur them. So you never have to worry about everything on YouTube is always blurred because we, uh, we want everybody to feel comfortable. 
Um, so you don't have to worry about that. Um, but I do encourage everybody to go out right now and follow us on um, YouTube. I just put the link out there. A couple of people have been doing that. Um, Tashawn says the last member that got married was um, engaged less than three months. Again, that's true. Uh, people move much faster, like I said, when um, when they are waiting. Also, I encourage everybody to turn their camera on. Again, especially for the ladies, this is a great way. And, and if you can't turn your camera on, at least put a picture up. Like I see, Ophelia has a nice picture of Ronnie. Okay, I can't say that. Um, Veronica, um, has, has her, um, her picture of a lot of y'all ain't got nothing. Y'all just got names. And, you know, like I said, your person could be on the call right now and you're missing out. So it's always best to show your face. You never know, especially ladies, because, you know, you got some really great guys here. You got Mr. Tim, you got Jamar, you got Kevin, you got Mr. Stan, Dwight's on, and there might be some other guys that are white. Mr. J Salsa, you know, he got a cool name, you know, like me. So, um, you know, these guys, man, they might be checking you out. They might want you now. Okay. And like I said, they on an abstinent call. So they might hold on, you know, and try to do you right. But like I told you, don't be mad at some of these men, you know, once y'all married, you know, y'all, y'all getting it. Just letting you know. All right. So come on, Miss Elizabeth, what you got to tell us today? Um, thank you for the presentation, Jay. Really great. Um, I, I had a question on one of the slides, the one where you talked about the unwanted, um, unwanted children, like the generational curse. And um, the thing is that I like, I knew I was unwanted um, because even though my parents were married at the time, they had just gotten married. Like literally they got married one day and I was conceived. Um, and so like my mom, basically, she even told me point blank. She's like, you were unwanted. Okay. You are not wanted. And she made me feel that way my entire life, even now, like I have to like separate physically separate myself from her because it's really bad. Um, so, but my sister, now my sister was wanted. That was a planned pregnancy. So she's basically treated like gold. Um, but I mean, I guess my question is, how do you, because I mean, at this point, it's not even about my children. It's just about me. So one generation down, you know, one generation, how do you break that, that curse? Because it's like, it, it follows me everywhere, you know? Well, I, first of all, I hate that that happened to you. I really do. And again, that's one of the things that we want to, um, to stop. And I'm also praise God for you to, you know, tell everybody about your testimony because again, I think that that affects people. You know, I can see the few faces that were on here and they were definitely affected, you know, by what you just said. Um, but I think it's just like what you're, what you're doing already. Um, it's about understanding it. And then it's about, you know, making sure that when you have children, you know, that you do the exact opposite, that you let them know, you know, every day that, you know, I wanted you, you know, I wanted you to be here on this earth. Um, it wasn't just that God wanted you, that I wanted you and that I love you. And that, you know, I praise God for you. And I just think you just, you know, you let them know uh, within, you know, within their heart, you know, I mean, so that they will know that they are desired. Um, no, I don't, I don't even have children. I'm, I'm not even like, I'm not even married. I'm just saying like, I can't even get past that. I can't get past that. Um, what happened to me to move forward, you know, in my life. I see what you're saying. Um, then I would kind of lean you toward, you know, toward therapy if you haven't already looked toward that. I mean, you know, nobody. Well, we do have a few people here that actually have done therapy before. I mean, they're actually doctors and stuff like that. So they actually might want to speak up on it. In fact, I think Stephanie's on if she wants to um, say something on it, because she's going to be a lot more, um, you know, qualified to, to speak on that than me. But um, I would just say, I think you're doing the right things. I think that you are, you know, like I say, I would lead towards therapy towards to get that pain out. But I think you've already done a good job just by um, acknowledging it. Because a, a lot of the problems that we have as people is that we do not acknowledge our own problems. And we don't see it. And so it, we can't solve a problem until we basically have recognized that we have it and that we, um, you know, put it out there, but it doesn't mean you're going to have it forever. It just means that, you know, you're dealing with it at this moment. 
So I don't know, like I said, Stephanie, because I did see her earlier, but I don't know if she's dropped off the call or whatever. If she no, I'm still, I'm still here. <laughs> hey, and I, um, I thank you um, so much, Elizabeth, for sharing. And I just want to make a couple of points for clarification. Yes, I am a doctor. Um, and I am a behavior analyst. I am not a counselor. I'm not a psychiatrist, not a psychologist. And I want to put out a disclaimer. Um, my, you know, my credentials are on my Zoom because I use it professionally. But this is not my professional setting. So we are not in a professional relationship. So this is just Stephanie as a regular citizen. Um, but I do want to say, as from personal experience, um, Elizabeth, I have felt that um, I was also unloved in that way by a parent. That is a different, uh, that is a deep feeling. Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not on camera. I am also working on my hair. Otherwise I would do that because you deserve that um, professional respect. Uh, so I do want to say that, but I'll tell you what helped me. I was in a relationship. It wasn't a great relationship. But he showed me genuine love. And then God sh showed me through that, that my mother, in my case, did actually love me. Because my mother and I, I'll just tell, tell the story. Um, because Elizabeth, you went there. So I'm going to give you the same. Um, I was a rough child. <laughs> so there is no coincidence that I'm a behavior analyst. But at one point, I was just, you know, having one of my moments. And my mom told me she wished she had gotten an abortion. So I held on to that from 19 to like 30 something that I was less than and I was unwanted. And, but through that relationship and he sent me a message one day and it was so beautiful. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then the Lord showed me with that. Cause I am also now I'm full disclosure, one of those women who've had an abortion. So God kind of put those two things together for me and said, how will you feel when you do have your first child? That's how your mom felt when she had you. So now for me, that was healing. So definitely you would need some healing. I agree with Jay with a uh, professional counselor. Um, I like Christian, I prefer Christian counselors, but you know, you can go to whoever you like. Uh, but to me, Christian counselors bring in the word along with, you know, professional therapy. And so the other thing I can tell you is bask in the love of God, bask in the love of Jesus. Make sure whatever input you're taking into yourself is loving things because you're going to have a lot coming against you that says that you're unloved because that's the message you hear. And that's the message that you've been told. So that praise and worship music um, that Jay was talking about way back in the beginning with those slides, that's going to get you there. Reading John, the chapter of John, it talks a lot about love. If you think, if you think about John, um, he's one of the disciples that Jesus loved. So you're going to have to saturate yourself in love. Also think about the people who are around you. I don't know if you have um, good people around you who show you love who show you genuine love. And so it's not just love, because some, some people lo love you because of what you can do for them. So if you're really talented, um, some people love you for that, but I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about genuine, true love. So you saturate yourself in that, but more importantly, saturate yourself in the love of God. And then um, definitely get into... Uh, therapy, if you work a job, most jobs give you a little bit of therapy for a very little or no cost. So definitely look out for those resources because I, I, I also tell people I love everyone. So I have to watch that though because that can go in many directions. But Elizabeth, I can tell you on this call right now, if you have no one else, you are loved here. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And thank you, Jay. Um, I I think the Bible, like literally reading the Bible is helping me because it's kind of like, um, you know, it's okay. Maybe I wasn't in my parents' plan. Okay. But I was certainly in God's plan, right? I'm here for a reason. He put me here. So that, that in and of itself helps me like without even therapy. I haven't even explored that, you know, yet. 
Amen. And that's it. That's how God brought it to me, that I am loved. You're loved by me and you're, you got it. You're in God's plan. And so you are, you're perfect and you're loved in his sight. And you loved on this call too. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Elizabeth. You ready to stand? Are you done? Are you, you still have something you want to say? Oh, hey, what's up, uh, CSC? Hey, I just wanted to uh, uh, look back to something you had said earlier, Jay. I wanted to comment to the group uh, about the tithing part as far as going from, you know, if you don't feel comfortable tithing, going to another church. In my opinion, there will be no perfect church. So before you consider church hopping and tithing, because Tithing is, 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 is biblical and, and Satan will do whatever he can to get you not to tithe and keep you jumping from church to church to church. So, you know, feel comfortable when you tithe, you're being obedient to God. So it doesn't matter what that preacher is doing with the money, because God is going to deal with that person. God is looking at you just to see if you're going to be obedient. And that's all I want to say about that part. No, I agree with that. I definitely agree with that. And so, yeah, that's good clarification. I appreciate that, Stan. Because we don't want people, like I say, hopping from church to church to church. But I do feel like, you know, if you feel like your pastor is just evil, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like, why are you there in the first place? You know, because um, there's a lot of other churches. And uh, I'll be real. I know, you know, the church I'm hanging out with. One of the main reasons why I think they're doing so well is because the pastors there have kind of made kind of whether it's a personal declaration or an outward declaration, it just feels as though they're just decided not to go down the money train. And um, they seem very humble um, in, you know, the way that they deal with um, finances. And I think that's one of the reasons why the church has grown, because I do think a lot of people, they don't mind tithing if they feel like, you know, their pastor is not going to walk around with brand new Bentley, you know, every year. Um, you know, because I think we all recognize, especially if the money's going someplace great, you know, to help people or even, you know, to provide for the people in the church. I mean, because ultimately, you know, that is what, you know, we're we're doing. And also, um, you know, if you guys want, you know, not, you can't send your tithe here, but if y'all want to send an offering over to CSC, you know, we actually do take offerings. We, we, we got bills. <laughs> you know, so... Um, if you want to do that, or if you really want to do me a favor, um, when we go out as a group and you meet us out as a group, you cannot do this for me, but you can do this for all the other organizers. If you want to pay for another organizer's meal um, as a blessing to that organizer, I would really appreciate that. So those are people like Lori, people like Kevin, people like, like I say, Sean Williams, Sean. So if we're all out together and you want to buy them their meal, you can't do it for me because then it'll be self-indulgent, but you can do it for them um, because they do do work for you. And you can see right then and there whether or not where that money's going, you know, and half the time it ain't going to be more than $15. So that would really encourage me and it will really bless me. And I know it'll bless them for all the extra work that they do. Tawana's here, boy. Go, Tawana. I ain't seen you in a while, girl. You know, I was going to pick on you. Hey, how are you? It's nice to see everybody. Nice to see you, Jay. I love your class. Sometimes if I'm, you know, on sun Saturdays, I'm tired and it's hard to make it out here, but I saw the topic and I'm just thankful to be here. It's a, It was a wonderful presentation. Well, I praise God for you. So you're ready to start us a, a CSC branch way up north? Um, well... We'll talk about it. I would definitely need assistance, but um, you know, yeah, it's it's sometimes it's hard to get on here because you guys, it's ten o'clock here in Illinois, so I'm like, oh, I gotta get up early. You know, I'm not a morning person, but anyways, you know, I do appreciate it, and that's why I made the effort to be here today. And and I, I like I said, I enjoyed your presentation, very informative, um, and I always learn so much. So I look forward to hearing everybody's um, comments, and if I have any, I will offer mine as well. Okay, well, I appreciate it. Everybody's so quiet this morning. Y'all don't want to talk about sex? I mean, that's what doggone um, Song and Pepper said. We got to talk about sex, baby. Thank Come you. on, Calvin. I know you got some you sex said. talk to do. Oh, uh, Shannara, you got something? Come on, Shannara. No, I just said you said what needs to be said. You know, I don't, I when I do open up my mouth, it's going to have to be something that's in addition, but 
And you just drop the hammer. What else need to be said? Okay. So Tim, are you clapping or you got your hand up? Okay. Calvin, yeah. come on, Calvin. I know you got something to say. You all got something to say about sex now. Come on. Come on, man. What are these women doing out here in these streets? Mm -hmm. I think Tim was about to share something, Jay. Yeah. Oh, I picked I'm sorry. The wrong go ahead, symbol. Tim. Then we'll go to Cal. It looks go like ahead. a cop symbol. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah. Oh, this is really difficult for me. Um, I'll try to make this really brief. I feel like I'm a different person now, vastly different than I was when I was younger. You all know I'm 65. I know I don't look it, but I'm telling you the uh I've only been with a few women and it's been forever and ever and ever. But I'm telling you, the first time I had sex, I felt a little convicted. Second time, I got majorly convicted. The third time, God slammed me on the mat. And that's when I really kind of had to rededicate my life to Christ. Because I've been a Christian since I was 18, but I was just kind of like, you know, when you're young, you don't really see things as clearly as you do when you get older. You don't have the, the experience. You don't have the time behind you. You don't have the spiritual growth. So God had said to me, you know, <laughs> when it comes to sex, drugs, uh, all that stuff, uh, even smoking cigarettes, he said, your body is not your own. You've been bought with a price. So honor me in your body. And I never got over that. So I've been in abstinence for an awful long time. And it's hard to talk about. I don't want to get emotional. But I know as much as it hurts, as much as I sometimes hate it, I know that my heart is in the right place that I'm honoring God. And, and it says obedience is better than sacrifice. So I know I'm doing what's right for God. And I, whether I ever meet someone or don't, either way, the reality is I have to obey the Lord. So that's all I've got to say. The spirit has been very strong in me the last several years. And, and God don't play. What he says, he says. So we can't try to compromise or bend the truth because we're all paid for it. Your sins will fight you out. So that's that's basically it. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. I appreciate that. Man, y'all quiet. Y'all don't like talking about sex, boy. I tell you, Calvin had disappeared on me. Where you at, Calvin? Okay, Patricia, guys, see the women taking over. Come on, Patricia. That's what I like. <laughs> um, this is my first time, actually, and I kind of enjoyed the subject. Um, but I do have, um, and just help me out a little bit. Um, I can say I was a little concerned about one of the statements. Um, you said the marriage bill is un, uh, the marriage bed is undefiled. So I've been married before, but I do know in certain some uh, circumstances, I think you have to be uh, make sure that you're okay with whatever you're bringing into your marriage bed. That the other person is okay with that. Um, and also you have to also be careful what you bring in, even if it's not a live person, uh, what you may be bringing in, um, and be, and being aware of what that person was dealing with beforehand or maybe been delivered from, because you don't want to introduce something like that back into that person's life. And that was just my comment. No, I love it. That's 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 a perfect comment. Um, and we I, well, I know I said it. I think last time we had a meeting and we talked about this. I personally don't believe you should ever ask your person to do anything that will hurt them mentally, physically, spiritually, or emotionally. And you have to, you know, recognize that it's going to change from person to person. It's just like you were saying, Patricia. So, for instance, if somebody has a bad experience with, I don't know, high heels then high heels might not be a thing that, you know, y'all can have fun with in the bedroom. And um, because they might have a mental, personal, emotional, spiritual um, block against that thing. Now, not to say that people, again, shouldn't do therapy and different things like that. But at the same time, you know, you have to be caring about your person. And there's so many things out here to do and to develop. You don't need to get caught up in one thing. I mean, come on, guys. Let's have fun. Ain't that right, Jocelyn? Jocelyn don't have to have fun. I'll get it to you later. But um, <laughs> what do you think is an appropriate time to ask those type of questions? Um, it's definitely, for me, it's definitely not on the first couple of dates. But you do want to know what, you're, what you like and what you don't like. 
And I mean, I know, you know, first couple dates, because I know if I go out with a dude, he'd be like, so, okay, well, we all grown. So in my last relationship, you know, my ex asked me, you know, you know, I like teabagging. And I had to Google that because I never knew what that was. And I almost threw up. I'm like, I know you out your dang mind. You know, so yeah, you know, that ain't Google. going in my mouth. You know, so uh, so it's like, um, what's an emotion? What What is an appropriate time to ask about stuff like that? I don't know. Let's, let's ask CSC. So what, what do y'all think? Y'all know I'll, I'll call on you. you know, I got okay, you. Okay, Shannara says she got to hear that. Yeah. Oh, go oh, ahead, Shannara. Go ahead, Shine. You know I've been running my mouth. I wish, I wish a fool would ask me <laughs> sexual questions in the beginning stage. Are you serious? That's yeah. an immediate turn off for me. Okay, same. Are you kidding me? I'm a whole grown woman. I expect and I trust the Lord enough in a, in a whole different way. Whereas if we are headed for marriage, let's just set that straight. That everything going to work the way it's supposed to work. What I'm not going to do is arouse, especially if we sexually attracted to each other like Jay was going into depth about. And we, you know, but I can't wait till it, it's time. Listen, I'm not going to arouse it by starting to talk explicit with him. We're not going to do that because I'm a whole grown woman. So I'm not about to go down that route. Like I said, I found it, I would definitely find it disrespectful for a guy I'm just going out with, particularly early on. There's no marriage on the table. I can't, mm -hmm. I can't believe anybody in the 40 plus room where I am would think that was appropriate to do that that is awful he, he was, was a whole grown man in his 40s why oh, are you yeah. being why are you being approved i'm like negro i ain't approved I'm a i think a lot of this is porn culture so many people are struggling and, and normalizing porn and so it's tipping over into how they carry on and with normal people in normal dating situations that's the problem because i firmly I firmly believe, you know, the freaky, the freaky, sneaky stuff need to go on once we reach a certain level. Those questions are appropriate once we reach a certain area where we know we go in some place. But if we're still dating, getting to know each other, I just think that's. But, but it's so normalized. People have sex on their phones and then you got your influences with everything hanging out. So to have it in commonplace everyday time, it's it would transfer to the porn man. To have mm -hmm. that conversation with somebody they just met. Right. It's, where it's nasty out here. Agree with that. You gonna say something to Sean? Go ahead. Um, yeah, well, you know, we, we had an uh a uh repartee last what two weeks ago about some of this, <laughs> but um uh I don't I, I'm very uncomfortable when things like that come up early on. I think that that should that should be low on the priority list of things you want to not find out about me initially, because uh, we might get to the point where we don't even need to find that out about each other. So you should really be showing an interest in me as a person, as a human um, first. If you're focused on that, then that kind of tells me where your priorities are. Um, and as you were saying, Jocelyn, I mean, later on, then okay, um, I'm a very detail-oriented person. I really pay attention to people and their behavior, so I can pretty much tell. I've, I've not had bad experiences. I can pretty much tell my people. So, um, because them statistics you had, Joseph was sad. But, um, but the uh, the the more I'll say extreme like Shannara what she was just talking about if you have extreme preferences where you know that it's not it's, it's far afield of the baseline like you got you know like I said two weeks ago if you you know a furry or you like BDSM or any of that type of stuff that's just like real far outside the range of what's you know, kind of familiar, then you probably want to find that out if that's like a big deal breaker for, for you or them earlier on, because it's not something that's, you know, that you just come across on, on a normal, regular, everyday basis. And if it's a major issue, then yeah, save somebody some time and go ahead and, and have that conversation earlier on or ask the fringe questions that kind of lead up to it. Like, you know, have you ever been to a convention or something like that? But um, yeah, if it's just the regular 
type of questions that are not extreme, then you would want to wait until that kind of naturally comes up. And it's an appropriate, we really know each other. This is going in a certain direction. And I just want to make sure that we're on the same page type of a thing. And premarital counseling is also a good place to kind of bring up some things that you maybe aren't comfortable talking about on a normal, but you do need to find out, you know, before you get all the way to that point. Cool. Um, and, and honestly, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to kind of go here. You know, we kind of brought it up in the last meeting. Y'all, if y'all missed last meeting, man, y'all missed a good time. We had a good time. Last time, <laughs> um, but you know, as you know, Tashawn brought up the furry world. Um, you know, one of the things that I'm constantly trying to get people to understand, you know, if somebody their only thing is, you know, they got some weird sexual fetish, and you can live with it, you know, it's nothing that hurts you mentally, physically, spiritually, or emotionally. Um, I think you should be down with it. I'm sorry, I, I just do. Um, that's just my encouragement. Because it's kind of like I said, you don't have to like everything um, that your partner wants, but at the same time, you know, it shouldn't be too crazy because you'd be you'd be surprised. Oh, Jenny got the baby behind her. Um, you know, because it it has some stuff. So for instance, furries, because you know, people's like, okay, what does this mean? It just means people that dress up like um little cartoon animals. Um, I even brought up last week, um, last two weeks ago, uh, I saw this guy on um cheaters. And his girlfriend broke up with him because he wanted to dress in a pamper and basically suck on her breasts like he was a baby. Um, and again, it's like I try to tell people, if I ran into the perfect woman and she was perfect in every way, like Mary Poppins, and then she was like, well, twice a year, I need you to put a pamper on and lay on the couch and suck on my breasts like you're a baby, then I'd be like, boo, I, I got you. I can do that twice a year for you. All right because you're perfect in every way. And we have to, you know, kind of get out, you know, everybody's been through around the block a couple of times, you know, especially if you're there over 30, nine times out of 10 have been around the block. So they might've picked up one or two things and don't throw away, you know, what they call the baby with the bathwater. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? It's like, you know, sometimes you got a great person, they just might have a weird fetish. And like I say, but if it hurt me emotionally, spiritually, or mentally, mm -hmm. then I'd be like, no, nah, I can't do this for you. Yeah. Yeah. Because it could be hurting me. Or hurt physically. Yeah, or hurt physically. So if it's a physical, mental, spiritual, or emotional hurt, then I would say don't do that. But if you know this is in your mind is this is just silly, you know, then hey, knock it out. Do 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 you, do you. So come on, Kevin. Yeah, I took it down with these fetishes. So um uh... But when I originally heard the question, I heard a different question. So I'm going to uh, address that one. And as far as the discussion on if you're seeing somebody and when you talk about sex, I do think that's a conversation. Once you determine that you're going to date on a regular basis that you should have as far as is this something that we want to look for? What's our pans on it? So on and so forth. I feel like especially if you are abstinent. That's something that you should identify early on in a relationship so your partner knows what your boundaries are. And that's my time for the day. Cool, cool. Come on, stand the man. Hey, what's up? Hey, uh, two things. I want to uh, comment on what uh, he just said. I want to uh, add this caution. When you get that question, like you're dating, I, I get a lot of women that might say, oh, well, what type of woman are you looking for or whatever? If you give someone your playbook, they could abuse that and to appease you just to get you. And then when they got you, then they flip the switch. So be careful answering certain questions on what you like or what you don't like, because just let it come naturally. Because if you give them too much ammunition, they could just be using that to appease you. Um, so... I, I don't know what's 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 what what's y'all taking that. And then the other question, this is specifically for the ladies. If we're not, if we're gonna be absent, ladies, can her brother at least get a foot rub? 
I don't know. Some women, you know, foot rub might lead them all the way. <laughs> pedicure stand, right pedicure. Right yeah, right yeah. You, you, you got to get a pedicure stand. Don't no woman want to cut up her hands. I'm trying, saying, trying like, are you trying feet. to get a pedicure? I mean, get a, a, a foot rub or give a foot rub? Like, I need to go. Well, oh, no, I, I, I'm, I'm all about uh, reciprocation. Uh, I have no problem being, you know, mutual give and receive. Not a problem. Okay, I'm sorry. I know I, there's hands up, but I need I need a consensus on this. How many men want their feet rubbed by a woman? I've never heard this before. How many what? Say that again. Sister. How many men on here would want a woman to rub his feet? I've never heard a man request that, but I, like they want to do it, but get one. I've not heard before this. Well, I mean, it I is eventually, but I mean, it, it's not something I would just have to have. Well, see, okay, Tashawn, let, let me let me say this from from for me because I wear work boots. I'm an engineer, so I wear work I wear work boots five days a week. So I prefer a foot rub over a shoulder rub just because of my feet are tired. Okay, I mean, I understand. I, I mean, get that. I mean, heard it for. Full body massages regularly, but I'm not gonna ask the man that I'm seeing for a full body massage. I get them butt naked. I don't leave underwear on or nothing like that. But I'm paying for those. I'm paying for those by a professional. I'm not gonna ask that man to give me a full body massage because I'm a grown woman, and because I this is the body that pays my bills. So my other way around is I'm not gonna massage the feet of a man. What is not paying my bills because I don't expect my boyfriend to pay my bills, but that's my point. Wow, wow, <laughs> yeah, hey, I mean, I, I know you and y'all can go out there on that, but I'll tell you straight up every woman that I date, and I said this before, she has to allow me to give her calf massages because that's what I naturally do when I watch a movie mm -hmm. or something. So yeah. we're watching the movie together, that's just what's gonna happen. If she ain't down for it, then we're gonna have a problem. We don't mm. have a problem, but oh, different you know, hey. than me. I must have a really sensitive erotic body or something. I just can't imagine nobody I am physically attracted to rubbing on me for an expen um extended amount of time. Oh my god, especially as long as I've been not saying it. Please no. Uh -uh. I'm with not happening. I'm with <laughs> hey, can I okay? Can you hear me? Go ahead. Can you hear me? I'm in the car. Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, yeah, I've had my camera off a lot of the time because I've been doing my errands and stuff. But um, I'm sitting back listening, and man, when I say I have a headache so much about this topic because it's a big one for me, um, I know that men have passed me over because I'm abstinent. I mean, it's pretty obvious. Um, and it, it's like, dang, if I would just go there, I would be married right now. But anyway, <laughs> but um, I want to say something. I'm going to go backwards. So Stan, yes, I would rub the feet because, yeah, if you work and, and the relationship is progressing and you care for that person, if that would ease them, sure, I would do that. Um, But I wouldn't want anybody like Shannara said, I wouldn't want a man to rub my body, though, because that's sexual for me. I would become aroused if I let him do that to me. Same thing with the calf muscles. No, Jay, you cannot rub my calf muscles on the couch watching a movie and I'm not going to get aroused because I ain't had none. <laughs> so I don't you know about Like that. I said, you just might be, need to just, like I say, come in with a burka. <laughs> but, but this is the, um what I wanted to say. You were talking about, I think it was, was it Tanara or Jocelyn that asked the question about bringing up sexual like the tea bag and stuff um number one number one why is the question being asked because if we are trying to get to know one another like if i ask you a question what you like in bed and stuff now i'm gonna be thinking about it right and if i'm trying not to be having sex with you i don't need to know all that because i'm, I'm gonna be thinking about that thing and then um, secondly, a lot, a lot of times we, we want to know sexually what you like because we got way too much sexual experience, you know? How do you know you like that so much? How do you know that? Because we got way too much sexual experience 
on what we like when like going back to what you were saying during the presentation when you get with that one all that stuff is in the past god made you a new creature y'all supposed to be not not bringing any of that old stuff into that relationship because y'all are discovering each other brand new you know like you never did it before and i would say because i've had sex but I've, it's been a while since i've it's been a couple years since i have um you do that those memories tend to fade and so now you can start over brand new with that person and exploring my standard answer first of all it's a turn off when a man asked me that in the in the beginning it's a turn off and and I, I just i don't have i don't have the energy anymore because i'm like he's focused on the wrong thing but my standard answer is when and if you are to know that you will know at due time because we don't need to be talking about that if we're not anywhere near that arena right now. I don't even know if I want to sit and have a meal across the table from you yet, but you want to talk to me on the phone about what my sexual preferences are. You get, you need to pace yourself, you know, and that's a red flag for me when someone wants to talk about sexual preferences so soon. Another thing, too, because we can talk about sex because none of us are most of us here are not virgins. Um, another thing we could say, because I do say it, anything that is permissible between two people, that is it. So if you do have things that you like, I'm down for it because I love you, you know, but don't bring another person into it. Don't bring no porn. That's other people. None of that, because God put us together as two to do all kinds of things. And that's a, that's a big open oasis of possibilities to do sexually but once you want to get into the details and stuff how is that really benefiting us to grow closer spiritually and emotionally and mentally because we are sexual creatures once you tell me oh you like it from the back i'm thinking about you the whole time yeah me too you know i'm thinking about that like what do i want to do so in order to keep your focus try to try to just stop that or nip that conversation in the bud and some people will, you'll notice their energy change. They don't want to talk to you anymore because that has happened to me. Then that wasn't for you. And that's my, that's my spiel on that. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. That was good. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Ms. DeVita. Uh, we're about to go to Tawana. But before we go to Tawana, um, I did want to say a couple of things based off some stuff in the chat. So Elizabeth, uh, Elizabeth McCall says that she had requests for foot rubs when she was married. Um, so she brought them a massager. <laughs> Um, but a lot of people want the human touch. Um, and so that's probably what was going on. He wanted the human touch. And that's why, you know, maybe that gift didn't go, go over the way that you thought it. I think about the same thing. Um, I would never want to go to a masseuse. I want my wife to do that. I don't want another person touching my body. I want my wife touching my body. And if she doesn't say, well, I don't want to give you a massage, to me, that's selfish. That's how I would see it, um, because I'd be like, I want you to touch me. That's the whole purpose of having you um, and not going to somebody else. Now, I understand if you don't if you're not at that place or if you just want a more professional type of feel. But everybody has what they want. And I think that's part of what we're talking about here, because I think we've gone from abstinence to preference, which is fine. Um, like I said, y'all know we love to talk. So um, I'm all cool with that. Um, then Kevin says, where are y'all meeting these dudes? <laughs> Um, and to shine answer any and everywhere. But one of the things that I would also say, Kevin, and we talked about this before, um, to make sure that everybody kind of gets this is, and I kind of said in a presentation, people are actually attracted to sexual energy. So a lot of times we're attracted to the very sexual energy that we like. And one of the issues that we have as people, especially as Christians, and this is why I was trying to say in the presentation without overdoing it, is that if you do not give out any sexual energy, if you come off as though you have no sexual desire, you will not be attractive to the opposite sex. Okay, and this is really hard for Christians, extremely hard, because the church is constantly telling you abstinence and don't do this and don't do that and this and that and all this other kind of stuff. But if you do not have a, that's, that's why you had that one dude in the church and everybody knows this dude is sometimes with multiple dudes that is going through every woman in the church. 
He didn't have sex with half the people in the church. And then people wonder, why y'all keep having sex with him? Why y'all keep dating him? It's because women are attracted to the sexual energy that he has. Jay, I hear you. My, my, my comment was in response. I think D had said something about she was talking to somebody on the, I mean, they ain't went on the first date yet. And old boy is talking about sexual acts. That's why I'm asking, like, like who does that? That was, it was but bad. I mean, I, I get that. I get that. So. That's kind of what you were saying. I was saying it more from the perspective, because I think from a Christian, and we've talked about this in Thursday Talks, is that people need to understand, even as a Christian, there's still a point where if you're not thinking about sex in the back of your mind, and I kind of hate to say this because this is where it gets real itchy and 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 and, and weird, um, especially for a lot of Christians, because people assume that you're thinking about sex. And see, so a lot of churches, when their pastors get up, they're assuming that you're thinking this. But if you don't have sex in the back of your mind, when you are around other Christians, then those Christians will feel like you are neutral. They, they, there's no sexual vibe on you. And so what happens is you could be a perfect woman for a man or a perfect man for a woman. I feel like this happens to men more than it happens to women because there are literally women that, that will say, and I've heard them talk about this. They're like, I don't like dating Christian men. They'll, or they'll say, I'm not attracted to the men in my church. And the reason why is because those men are walking around and they don't have enough sexual energy that, that makes them attractive. Because at the end of the day, me being a great guy is not going to keep a woman. I'm just going to be real. At the end of the day, every woman is thinking in the back of her mind, look, if this dude can't knock it out, I don't want him. I'm just being that. real. What are you going to say, Davida? You going to say that ain't true? Yeah. Well, no, that's true. And I understand where you're coming from. But Unfortunately, we live in a time where in order to be um, sexual or considered sexual, women and men have gone over the top to show their sexuality. You don't have to do that. Okay, a woman can accentuate her curves and not be raunchy. That is her sexual energy. A man can be at the church and wear a nice cologne and be clean shaven, and he's sexy to me. But he doesn't have to be overly sexual. And unfortunately, if you're not doing all of that and doing what they're doing in the media, they think that you don't have sexual energy. That's not true. A woman in her femininity and her own right is a sexual being. You're, she's not going to be swinging from the rails and batting her eyelashes, these big eyelashes, to get your attention. So that's her femininity is sexual right there. Of course she's sexual. Of course he's sexual. And that other stuff, that's let me get to know you behind closed doors. And I don't mean sexually, but let me get to know you outside of church and see who the real Jay is. Let me see who the real Davida is. And that conversation, because again, I'm sapiosexual. So that conversation, when I know you have something going on, that's attractive to me. And I don't need to know your sexual prowess, because for some reason that I'm, I'm anticipating finding out, you know, you know what I'm saying? No, no, I'm just saying. I'm, not... I'm curious without you telling me everything about what you do and how you do it. I'm with you, but what I'm talking about more is energy. And I do agree with what you're saying, but what I'm talking about, I'm really talking to the guys here. Um, because it's more of an energy thing. It's not so much about you being overly sexual because you don't have to ever say a word. But there has to be something, I think, about you as a man. It's like I said in one of my videos I put on YouTube, a man has to have what I call a tame tiger inside of him. But the woman has to see the tiger. She has to know that the tiger exists. It doesn't mean that I'm going to say, oh, baby, you know, when we get together, it's going to be. No, no, no. I don't have to say anything. I don't even have to say anything sexual. But there's a way that a man moves. There's a way that he kind of looks. There's a way that he carries himself that a woman says, oh, there's, there's, there's something inside this dude. You know, he, he in church right now, but, you know, there, there, there's, there's, there's something in him. And I think the reason why this is important is because we've had people in CSC come through and they've struggled with women. They struggle with getting women and they don't, don't understand why they can't get the woman to pay attention to them and why the woman passes them over. And the reason why it's happening, I believe, is because the woman doesn't feel enough sexual energy. 
It's not so much about him being overt. And I agree with you 100%. You don't have to say anything sexual, but there has to be something right under the surface where the woman can feel, because this is all feeling, this is energy. Uh, so it's something that the woman can feel like, oh yeah, okay, it's not just the, the protection and provision I feel from this guy, but there's also a little bit of something else. And one day, maybe three months, a year or whatever down the line, there might be um, something there. And also sapiosexual, since you brought that up, D and Kevin put it in there. Um, I'm also sexual, uh, sapiosexual. And I do agree people um, that people should lean towards their sapiosexuality if you have, you know, all of us have at least a little bit. So um, that'll also help you to pick better people, I think, a lot of times because you pick based off their heart and their mind and not just picking off their body. Now, Tawana's had her hand up forever. I'm so sorry, Tawana. So That's go okay. ahead and put That's us okay. in our place. It's a hot topic. And like now I've got all these thoughts swarming around in my mind with all the comments that were made. Um, oh, my goodness. So first, in terms of what Jocelyn mentioned, um, I think like if you've been seeing somebody on a consistent basis and it's been like a month, then you should start having that conversation, I guess, about, you know, you're being abstinent. Um, and I agree with a lot of the women on here. A lot of times when men find out that you are abstinent, they want to know uh, more detail. Well, what will you do? Well, do you kiss? Do you hold hands? Those, those That's when it starts to become a, a turnoff because now you're asking me how far I'm going to go. And I think like on one hand, I get the fact that you want to know what we're going to do, but at the same time, it's not appropriate. Um, it, it's, it's, it's almost offensive because at this point, what you're telling me is you're not really getting to know me. You're getting, you want to know more about my body as opposed to knowing about me. So yeah, that's a turnoff. But I mean, I guess the men can answer that question as to, you know, what they feel is appropriate with that. But I think like you've been seeing each other on a consistent basis, maybe, maybe after a month. I don't know. Um, I will say this. Um, I did talk to this guy and I'll get, I want the men's interpretation of this and what they feel. And I, 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 I'm starting to discuss that earlier on when guys start, you know, mentioning on the first or second conversation, oh yeah, we could go on a trip together. We could do this. And I'm like, okay, um, let me let him know this is where I'm at. Um, because I'm not going on a trip with you at this point. I don't even know you. Um, but his, his comment to me after finding out that I was abstinent or whatever was that he felt like you shouldn't even be going on a date with a man. Um, a dinner date, unless, you know, you tell him that ahead of time, because he was like, well, that's just insane. I'm like, well, so you mean to tell me that I'm only worthy of a date with you if, if I'm going to be having sex with you in the future? And he was like, you should absolutely tell guys before you go on a date with them, before you have them spend money on you that you're going to. So I'm like, okay, um, as a guy, like, First of all, most women can pay for their own meal. It wasn't the date, it was the companionship that I thought we were both seeking. But now that I know that that's what you own, at this point, you know, no, we don't have to go on a date at all because I don't need you to go buy this little $30 meal and that $30, $50 meal that you're talking about is not worth me sleeping with you. You don't get that. Um, so it, it was it was quite offensive. Um, so now I'm like, okay, so what do you do? Do you have that, that conversation on the first Um the first conversation initially, and I guess you should, because people have expectations that are that you're going to be putting out because they pay for you to have a meal. I think it's insane. So I'll say that. Um, and I'll ask the guys what they think about that. So now I felt like maybe I need to disclose this right away because if you go on a, you know, whether we go on a dinner date or a movie date, you know, you feel like there's gonna be something happening afterwards. Um as it relates to you, I wanted to address the other thing that you said, um, Jay, and that was about the sexual energy. Um, I don't think that I give off sexual energy, but yes, I like to dress. Yes, I like to look nice or whatever, but I don't know if I'm giving off the sexual energy that you're talking about. So I wanted to get more detail about that. Um, and then I also disagree with you about nice guys, because for me, I'm like Davida, like I or Depot. I am a person that I'm a sapiosexual as well. So if we can have a good conversation um, and we can talk and communicate, I love that. 
But I like a nice guy. I don't care about the guy that has a whole, that exudes all this sexual energy, but he's not going to treat me right. And he's exuding all this sexual energy with everybody, meaning that everybody, oh, hey, how you doing, beautiful? Oh, how you doing, gorgeous? Hey, baby. I don't need that. I just need you to be a good man to me, be respectful, be a man of God. That's what I need. So I like a dude that's chill. He might have on some glasses. He might be low key. He don't have to be dressed to the nines. Hey, as long as you got yourself together mentally and you're treating me appropriately, I like the nice guy. So I would disagree with the whole sexual energy thing. I think the sexual energy is, you know, kind of what's ruining society as it already, you know, as it is, because, you know, everybody's looking for this sexual energy. But what about your character? That's what I want. What is your character? So I'll leave it at that. Um, And I want to hear about what the guys think about the whole discussion on whether you should discuss the abstinence on the first or second conversation to avoid any hiccups and uh further on in the relationship no i don't hey, know hey. Stan and and uh and jamar want to get to that so i'm gonna let yeah. you get to that. but i just want to say one thing about the sexual energy when okay. i say sexual energy i'm not saying conversation i'm not saying he's doing anything outwardly i'm just saying he could literally say nothing this is not him putting his arm around you or anything like that. There's just something about him where you have a certain feeling. It's like, it's the same feeling that you you get when you're around someone and they make you feel safe. They don't have to say anything, but you just feel safe. Okay, and then there's a thing where you're around certain men and you just feel icky. Like this dude, ugh, you know. And as you a woman, what do you mean by sexual energy? Because like now women are showing as little as possible I mean, and I'm not saying nothing about that. That's that's your business if that's what you want to do. So as a man, as a Christian man, when you say sexual energy, what are you asking for? Some people say you got to give an eye. You got to give a wink. You no, gotta I'm not, see, I'm not saying mean? all of that. Well, and that's yeah, why I said I'm really talking that. to the men. I'm not talking to the women when I say that. That's why I was trying to make sure that that was clear. But just to give you an example, and I'm just going to kind of just be real with you. Since I've been around on CSC, and like I said, I've talked to a few women in CSC, and there was one girl at the very beginning it was so funny to me because <clears throat> it was like back then it was nothing but women. It was me and a bunch of women. And the one woman that I felt energy from, and this was through the, through the computer, the one woman that I felt energy from, me and her talked for like a day or whatever. But even before she even made a move, because she did make the move, and um, before she even made a move, I could feel it. Mm. I could feel it. Yeah. And I could and I could pick her out. So what I, is it, like Jay? You gotta explain. What was on the call? I could pick her out. What's the energy, Jay? Give us the thing. That's why I said you do it natural. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's something that's natural. But I find that a lot of Christian men they turn it off. And so what I'm trying to make sure that the men don't do is that they don't turn it off. But it's not something that you talk about. So I just want to make sure I say that because this is not, hey baby, oh girl, you looking good? No, no, no. I want you to take that and throw that away. That's not what I'm talking about. It's the same feeling that a, a, a man just hanging around you, you feel safe or you feel icky or you feel weird. It's like um, Steve Harvey would say, it's a woman's intuition. You just feel a certain way when you're around the guy. Mm-hmm. And, and that's all I'm saying. And there are men who have turned that part of them off. And what I'm trying to tell those men is that they can't turn that part of themselves off. You, 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 you still hold it in, but it still has to be turned on. Because, you know, relationship is not just about, like I said, you know, finding the person, you know, as far as a, a good person is, you know, a lot of it is going to be that sexual desire that you have. That's all. That's the only point that I want to say on that. So I'm going to let Stan and I want to say Jamar, if he has something to say to what you were talking about, Tawana. But I actually just think the guy was a jerk. And I think y'all just need to find better guys out here. Ain't that right, Stan? So go ahead. Yeah, we go. Say Amen, brother. Amen. All right, Tawana. Um, I think first, first of all, most men are not expecting the woman to put out on the first date, second date, whatever. Uh, I think now that I mean, maybe maybe the younger men, but I think the men 30 and above, we're trying to see where your head is at. You know, are you bringing something to the table of substance, not just a cookie? Um, so I, I just I just want to say that. But as far as the sexual energy part. I kind of think I, I use this term and, and it's kind of an inside joke if, if one of my friends are, is on this call right now. But uh, it's like when a man meets you and you give him that church hug. And now we all know what the church hug is. 
You kind of turn to the side. You don't want any body parts touching. Well, if you're giving the church hug to every man or man that you might be interested in, you're giving them a, the, a false signal because it, at bare minimum, we're looking to see if you if there's any type of attraction coming from you towards me. But if you're giving everybody the, the man at church, the church hug, you know, the guy at CSC, the church hug. So you're treating all the men, you're giving them the same type of energy. We're like, we're at a loss. I'm like, OK, well, she's not really feeling me. You know, I get, I try to give her a hug. She's turning to the side or whatever. So I think that's what Jay is kind of talking about as far as receiving that type of energy. Um, and as far as talking about sex and all that on the first date or anything, yeah, that's highly inappropriate. Uh, however, and I had a, a friend tell me this, uh, you know, recently, um, when you're getting to know someone or even when you're dating someone, um, a lot of like, let's talk about, you know, foreplay. Foreplay can be a conversation, the type of look they give you, or you know what, a kiss. So, uh, you know, if, if you're, if you, the, the, the moment of intimacy can start at any, at any period. But at bare, at bare minimum, we don't have to talk about sex. We don't have to, you know, any of that. But at least, you know, stop giving every man the church hug because that's that's definitely throwing people off, throwing men off because we can't we can't we can't get a, you know, a bead on you that way. Um, and then if you're feeling a guy on a second, third date, you know, if he doesn't initiate a kiss, you can initiate the kiss. That's letting the man know that you are physically attracted to him. Uh, Kevin, what's your thoughts? No, thank you. I appreciate that. Okay, Jamar, did you want to say something on that before we go to Shannara? Because I know you had your hand up. I didn't know if your hand up was for Tawana's uh, answer or not. Okay, well, he didn't say nothing. So I'm going to move on yeah, to you. Hopefully. You guys Go ahead. I'm sorry. Were you going to say something, Jamar? Oh, yeah. Sorry. I think my connection dropped for a second. I'm going to choose my words carefully on this, but addressing Tawana first. Um, I don't know where you're meeting these people at because I have not asked any of these questions in the first few dates. That must be a that must be a further down south thing. But I do think that there is a level of conversation that does happen, like at some point. Uh, going back to something I talked about during one of the two uh, Thursday talks, having the smart conversation when it comes to general ideas around sex, money, uh, kids, religion, intangibles. But that is a very high level question that I ask when I'm getting to that level of we've been out for a few times. I just want to get your general sense on what's your opinion on some of these things. I'm not asking these these details on what your preferences are, what you're willing to do. It's more of a, what do you generally think about this? And some of those other opinions can come later. Also, maybe it's my background. I have a background as a dancer. I did a lot of Latin dance and salsa and bachata, and I did some sales work. I feel that as a guy, you should be able to, to read some of the, the body language that the woman's giving off. Like you should be able to have a feeling about how this woman is interacting around you. If it's how she moves around you in your space, if it's how she responds, if you put your hand on her shoulder casually, like you should be able to get a general reading on someone without having to be able to specifically ask these explicit questions, even when you're starting to move early, earlier in the dating relationship from the first few dates up until, I guess, uh, engagement. You should be able to have that ability to read the room around you and read the person around you and not have to be as verbally explicit. But maybe that's just my opinion. Oh, I appreciate that, Jamar. Did that help you out, Tawana? Yes, I thank you. I appreciate everybody's comments. Well, again, we want to always talk about, you know, finding really great guys and finding really great women. Um, because, again, I do see that that is one of the problems that a lot of us have is just finding really great people. And really great people aren't going to ask you these type of silly things. And they're not going to do that, you know, in the beginning, men or women. Because uh, there's women that will do stuff like um, on the first date. So how much money do you make? So, you know, what kind of car you drive? So have you ever thought about investing? You know, all these money things. 
Because that's that's the equivalent for men. You know, our disrespect is when you try to get in our pocket. And um, there's there's, you know, like I say, people on both sides. So we have to remember to try to find really great people. I think I think well, I will say this about finding because I know Kevin said that, too. He's like, you know, like, where are you guys meeting these people? As women, we're waiting to be found. If you're a Christian, you're waiting to be found. You're not seeking your hope. You're hoping that God will send the right man in your direction. But you are basically waiting. And so at that at this point, we're waiting to be chosen. So it's not that I'm picking the wrong type of guys. It is. You're waiting to be chosen. I mean, obviously, if I could do the picking, that would be a different story. But I don't want to be the four person and I'm not choosing a man because that's never going to work because I, I believe that a man needs to be a man. I believe in feminine energy and masculine energy and all of that. So I want to be chosen. So if that's the case, then that's going to put me, that's going to put my choices to more, a little bit more limited because I'm waiting on that person to approach and I'm not doing the pursuing. So that, you know, it is what it is as a woman, I think. Well, I mean, one of the things again, real quick, and I don't, I don't want to take up all the time, but you know, we talked about this in CSC. Technically anybody can do anything. If you go to Ruth, the book of Ruth, Ruth and Naomi came up with a plan to get Boaz. Now, yes, Boaz did check out Ruth, but um, it was Ruth and Naomi that came up with a plan. There's only one verse that talks about the man seeking the wife. Okay, my mm -hmm. ex-wife sought me out. Um, three of the women that I've talked to on CSC sought me out. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'll be honest with you, I, my, I've had better luck with them seeking me than me seeking them. So, um, you know, it's it, it's anybody's game, you know, but again, most churches are going to encourage women to um, to wait for the man to come to them. That is just how a lot of them um, act because they're acting like fathers to their daughters. Um, CSC's goal is to get you married. Mm -hmm. So we don't we don't care about that. You know, if you pick what we talk about and Tashawn is the person that had this uh, analogy, she's going to be talking pretty soon. But she talks about position yourself, position yourself around really great men and then allow those men to make the move. So even in church, you know, you can hang out in places where, you know, there's really great guys. Um, uh, and CSC, we talk about it all the time for the ladies that come out to the CSC events. One of the best ways to do is even if you're not going to be an organizer, just ask where you can help. It is better to be the helpful woman that walks around and says, hey, you know, what do you want to eat? Hey, you know, I'm helping out Tashawn today. I'm helping out Donna today. I'm helping out Lori today, you know, um, blah, 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 blah. Because what? Immediately the man's walls come down because you've already told him your name. Like, hey, I'm Tawana. I'm here to help. You know, what do you need? You know, I come to a lot of the CSC events. So you've yeah. already introduced yourself. You're already friendly. And the guy's always going to go to the person's name he knows first. Yeah. quicker than he's going to go to a woman that's on way across the room, surrounded by other women sitting in one little chair. You know, it's the woman that gets around, that leaves the group, that leaves the herd, yeah. <laughs> so to speak, yeah. and gets around and talks to the men. Those women always get more attention. OK, so it's just one of the things, like I say, my goal is for is to try to get you married. Like I said, my goal ain't the rest of it. So I'm thinking like Naomi. I'm thinking strategy, you know, how can we put Tawana in a situation of strategy where we can get that wedding ring on your finger? So come on, Shannara, she's over there stretching. Come on, woo woo. Hey, uh, man, I, I was, I, I've been on here longer than I planned, so I got stuff to do. Um, and I said I didn't have nothing to say, but my mind has been jogging. Here's, here's a point. I was thinking about, you know, we're talking about, oh, I know you say you have stain in, but can I kiss you? Can I touch you? Can you rub my feet? All this kind of stuff. And I think I'm going I'm to speak culturally as a black woman that Lord willing, I'll be 45 in a couple of months. And I think about how predisposed I was to sexual activity from youth and or in general, black women are um, typically uh, over hypersexualized from the point we are little girls. We are told we are fast. Um, we, um, when we start to develop and fill out, we're still 9, 10, 11, 12, but we're seen as sexual beings and stuff very young, right? And so we, our, our 
for the most part, at least where I come from, um, our introduction to sexual activity um, was warped. It wasn't pure, right? Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and then we kind of take control of our sexuality, so to speak, by the time we're young women and we go off to co college and we do what we want to do. And in my case, it was doing it overseas. And, and, then, and then we find ourselves, oh, um, I'm a Christian and having to learn to do um, sex and do relationships God's way is so countercultural mm -hmm. to what we've been raised in. And so by the time I am now a believer for real saved and wanting to do it God's way, it is um, disheartening um, to be around other so-called believers who downplay God's way or mm -hmm. want to uh, make me feel like um, me wanting to live right uh, is is a turnoff or they want to see how how far the she say this but how far the boundaries and it's like as as powerful as I might come off sometimes or strength and all that kind of stuff I don't know if any other woman on this call would be willing to admit what we really are searching for is um, a place to where we're treated tenderly and where we can be vulnerable and not feel like somebody is out to, you know what I'm saying? And so it has taken therapy. It has taken the Holy Spirit to uh, really work on my heart to cleanse me of that and to be like, you know what? I am born again. I am born again in my sexuality. And for the right man, that's going to be fine. It's going to be a pace of newness for us both because I'm pretty sure the way that the culture um uh bapt baptizes black boys into their sexuality has its own conjecture of nastiness as well and you guys having to come to Christ and give your sexuality to him is a whole different thing and um I just wanted to add that I think that kind of plays into black the black women aspect in America and how we have to present ourselves so that's one point I also want to I think about my dad I got young, I had young parents. My mother is no longer here, but my dad is still around. And uh, I appreciate him now more than I did when I was young. My dad was trying to give me the game when I was very young. And he's at a point where his new, his, my, my uh, stepmom, um, they are near a divorce. They have been together um, for like 35 years. And my dad, he, uh, as was was a whole rascal you hear me he provided for all these kids um he was a man a good man on paper but he was a whole rascal cheating on his wife unstoppable just out here in these streets right and um within the last 10 years he has had really bad uh, uh health problems and issues right and 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 what 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 that has done to him is confined him by default to not being out in these streets mm -hmm. and the reliance on the wife that he dogged out all these years. Mm -hmm. Where am I going? Now that all the kids are gone and grown for real, they are now in this house with each other. And he has admitted to my sister and I, he said, you know something? I don't like her. Mm. It's not a good woman for me. And I remember when he said he was going to marry Diane when I was in my junior year of high school. He said, going to marry her. And I knew, I mean, in my little feeble imagination, I said, well, why are you marrying her? And his response was, because I have kids by her and, uh, and it's a good thing to do. It's a good thing to do. So he married somebody who was not a friend. He did not take the time to get to know her. His response is now as an adult, he say, Diane, let me do anything I want to her. He'll let me, she'll give me any kind of sex I ask for. She do anything. So she's a, she's a pushover. She never challenged him, but she didn't have any personality. And she was, not, they were not friends. And so I think it's interesting to hear my dad talk about, be honest where he is in his marriage now. And they can't stand each other after all this time. But when he was younger and immature, it was all about the booty. It was, uh, that's what led every decision, even his marriage. 
And now that is not enough for a man who has physical problems and can't be out here in these streets anymore. He wishes that he had focused on the heart and seeing if this woman was really a friend. Agree with that. You got to go for that heart. That's yeah, one of them that snaps. T going crazy. Chat mm -hmm. going crazy. You know, you got to um, you got to find good people. We always want to find good people. Mm -hmm. So come on, uh, Tashawn, take us to school. <laughs> that was awesome, Shanara. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting when we uh, get a chance to watch our parents grow up. Um, and I'm speaking from my own experience. Um, I mean, prayerfully they do. Sometimes they don't. But, uh, but I wanted to 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 go back um, for a minute on the um, the sexual energy thing, just to double down on what Jamar was saying because that really kind of taps into it. It's really it's about being comfortable with yourself. Somebody said confidence in the chat. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the things that we come into this world with that, that God placed in us and our sexuality is one of those things. We're not taught in any school, in any situation, how to fully walk in what God blessed us to be. And, um, and so the world teaches us a perverted version of those things. And unfortunately, um, being, you know, chasing a tail or, you know, however you want to term it is a version of that. It's a perversion of something that's very natural. And as Jay said earlier, is a good thing, but we're not taught how to, um, how to walk that out in a good and positive way. And anything that you misuse or abuse can be um, harmful or destructive to us. I mean, we look at medications that can do great, great good, but they can also be very harmful. Um, too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. So it's really unfortunate that we have not kind of taken the reins in, in the church or in our, um, our own, you know, everyday lives to say the, what the, the, um, reading, writing, and arithmetic is not enough. That's not sufficient in order for us to be able to realize the potential of what God has bestowed in us. And unfortunately, the enemy tries to take us off course of using those things or learning the proper use of those gifts early on, or even sometimes putting in our parents or other influential people in our young lives that there's something wrong or bad about us in the way that we naturally were created. So um, so sexual energy can be those ugly things. It can be, you know, over-sexualization and all of that stuff because that's what the world has taught us to do, but that's not what God put in us to do. And so it's very simple things like being comfortable with the body that God gave you, whatever body that is, being proud of it, um, being comfortable with it, not being um, overly anything about it, just being you. And when Jay was focusing on the men and what I can say, and I, I mean, a lot of times we bring up this thing about age. I'm 51 years old as of Monday. Thank you, Jesus. And um, I don't date very young men. These are all men that are in their 40s, 50s, and they're doing all the things. They're doing all the things, okay? <laughs> so it's not an age, it's a maturity thing. And um, I mean, I'm glad to find out early on that, uh, that yeah, hey, this is where you're at, great. That's not where I'm at and I'm not trying to go there. So we can just keep it moving. But um, there's just simple things for the men. And, and this is, yes, this is me as a woman saying, if you are not clear, you're not comfortable and women will catch on to this because you, you, you experience it. Men, when you are getting close to a woman and it doesn't have to be somebody you're dating, it's just like you might see somebody and you want to have something to do with them that's beyond just whatever. You have to approach from, well, I think it was Stan that was saying like the, the, the it starts way further on. It, you, can't, you can't like come in direct, come in hot. You have to come 
from, from the side, like, oh, I'm going to get a little bit closer to you. I'm going to make eye contact with you when I'm talking to you. I'm going to show an interest in who you are as a person. I might, and, and if she touches you, now she's comfortable and you having physical contact. That doesn't mean that you got to grab her, but if y'all are laughing, you might touch her shoulder. You might touch her hand. Eventually you're building up to building a, bringing the wall down, bringing a comfort level of contact with the person. All of this uh, sexual industry is also called chemistry yeah. um, and, and electrical, you know, energy, all of these things where, like Jay said, your eyes kind of open up a little bit more. You, 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 if you're a woman and you don't know what it feel, you like can't relate to it. If a man makes you feel girly, that term girly, if she, you know, you feel giggly and you feel kind of funny and that's sexual energy. That's what that is. Mm -hmm. and it's not him saying it's actually the opposite it's not saying sexual things it's not doing ugly vulgar things it's the exact opposite it's making you feel things that you're like oh and oh and, and here's here's one key thing if you just need to do a quick test if you can't if you can't picture that person sexually then they they don't have no sexual energy that's just a simple, <laughs> or if you picture them and you're discussing that sexual energy, they don't have it because that's just a, as Joseph said, it's a natural part of us in it, men and women. We all have that in us. That's part of how God made us. So there's nothing wrong with it if it's done the right way. And so I just want to touch on doing things the right way. This stuff about acts and, and experiences and all of that stuff, that stuff don't mean a thing. It's told what, what good sex is has nothing to do with acts. It has nothing to do with acts. It has everything to do with enjoying that other person and being in a place with that other person where the whole world falls away and it's just you and them. And that's it. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It doesn't matter what who what what I won't do. All of that stuff because that those are things. The person is what is important. That moment, that bond, that connection is what's important. And there is no replication of that. There is no oh I did this with whoever before because that that connection that you have with that that husband or that wife you 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 may have had that in another marriage or whatever. But as Shannara said, you're a new thing. You're a new creature. And you have, you're not that same husband or wife to, to the, in that relationship that you are in this one now. And so it's all different. It's all new and it's all special. And it shouldn't, your focus shouldn't be on, will this person do these things? I've had an amazing sex life. I have been married before, but it wasn't all, you know, in marriage or whatever. And, and I... As Jamar was saying earlier, I paid attention to their body language and I and, the, and I knew that, OK, this person has too many walls up. They're too closed off. They're too worried about things that don't matter. Sex is supposed to be fun. It's supposed to be enjoyable. It's not supposed to be getting up one up on somebody or what can I make them do and all of this other stuff. And if that's the person that you're dealing with, if you're that way, then that's fine. But understand that if they're that way in other aspects of their life, they're not going to not be that way sexually. They're going to be that way in all avenues. If they're very fixated on all of these other things, they're going to have hangups in all the aspects. I happen to be a fun, adventurous person. So I like to um, enjoy myself and I tend to attract people who are similar. And so therefore I've had good experiences um, and I do attract people based on that being about me, but I am not talking about, Ooh, I want to do this with you. And for one, cause I am, you know, I don't want to get turned on. And for two, because it's a turn off for me. I don't want, I don't know you like that. Don't be talking to me like that. Um, we're not, whatever it is, we're never going to get there because you coming at me wrong. So I don't even, I'm not even interested. I'm turned off now. So um, when men or women come at you that way, then you may want to plant a seed to say, you know what, this is, I'm not about 
what I can or can't do or get out of another person. I'm about having a journey with a person. And if that's, you know, where you're at, then great. If it's not, if you're trying to check some stuff off your list, then that's cool. But that's, I'm not, I'm not a list to be checked off. I'm not, I'm not an item on your list. And um, so hopefully that's helpful, but um, I, 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 we need to talk about something besides sex though. I know that. Hey, 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 hey Tashaun. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry, but unlike you, I do have a list and one of them is do you rub feet? <laughs> Well, no, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, when people are like focused on on things like you, you should want when you're in a, a, a healthy relationship, you should want to do things to make the other person happy to the yeah. point where you don't have to like you don't have to all constantly look out for yourself because they're looking out for you yeah. and you're looking out for them. They're putting you first. You're putting them first. So nobody's yeah. forgotten. So that's the way it should be. But if, it, if you're coming in where yeah. you're like, you know, focused on, oh, they got to do these things. Yeah. Like Joseph was saying, is it about the person and the, the union and the bond? And is this the person that God has sent me that's going to elevate me to the next level of my life or help me to, you know, fulfill my purpose? Or am I just trying to get what I want? Because yeah. if you're just trying to get what you want, you can get that anywhere. Everybody on this call could be married right now. You, yeah. If you honest, you could be. You yeah. Maybe not the person you want, Maybe somebody that you that you feel like is busted or, you know, whatever they got going on. But if you just if that's what you just wanted, then you could have it. But you want it with the person you want it with. And that's why you're not with that person that you could be with if you were just, as some people say, settling. But um, but you just don't want to be like uh, what Shannara was saying about her stepmom, like somebody that's just there and they're not you know, pushing you to be your better self. They're not, you know, that they're, they're not really complimenting you. They're not, you're not a, a, a partnership. You're not um, helping each other to elevate each other to, um, to be, you know, better and be greater than, than what you are apart. Hey, I have a question for hey, Jay or Tishan for the whole group. And I, I was thinking about this last night, actually. Um, and maybe this is a good segue. If we go back to biblical times after Adam and Eve, so shortly thereafter, after the garden collapsed, um, what does the group think, men and women, why do, why do women get married or seek that marriage versus why do men get married and seek that? Because here's, here's, here's an analogy. If, if, if I'm a man, I, well, I'm a man, of course. Well, we hope I'm a provider. <laughs> I'm a provider. I, I make my own coin. I can protect myself physically. Um, I, I can provide for myself financially. I, if I could cook, clean, and all the other stuff to, to, to maintain a household, what aspect does a woman have to bring to the table in order to entice me. And then let's flip it. Same thing with a woman. If a woman is looking for a man to, to provide and protect, but in nowadays, a lot of women, and I think someone said it today, women make their own money, they can provide for themselves. So do we see where the breakdown is that? Because again, a single man that is self-sufficient is, 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 is not looking for the boss lady at the office, we're looking for the woman who's going to treat us like a man. So do, do, do we, do we not understand, do women not understand how to get a man's heart nowadays? Because it's not about the. I'm, I'm, I'm going to let you go there, but Elizabeth has her hand up. And before we go down that rabbit hole and all the women are starting to shake their hand and, <laughs> Oh, Lord, we going back to the table, the table, the table. Why is it always the table? So before we go there, let's let Elizabeth um, say her question slash comment. Jocelyn, I'll be rolling her eyes at you, Stan. You know, she liked you beforehand. She was probably going to holler at you at the next meeting, but now she's done with you. So come on, Elizabeth. Okay, Jay, so this is going to be real quick, so you can, um, y'all can get into that other thing. But, um, I just wanted to share one thing. I think you said 
um, before something about like women who are like into like they're looking for a certain income. And um, if I can share a quick story. So I, um, I had a friend who was on three or four, well, three or more dating sites. Okay. She had a profile up and she, I said, okay. I asked her, I said, what, what do you have on these profiles? Like, why is it? Cause I didn't understand why it was so important to be on all these sites. And she said, well, she said, um, I have a certain income bracket I'm looking for in a man I have. Um, he has to be over six feet tall and certain color eyes, all these things. And I said, OK, but what what if he's five, five, uh, eleven? Does that is that OK? He's, mm-hmm. She's like, no, 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 that that's not going to work because I wear heels and all these things. And so I said, OK, fine. Um, that works for her. That's great. Um, and then she she found a pilot through one of those websites um, and obviously had the income bracket. Everything was fine. He met all her criteria. They were dating for a year. Um, he, she sent me the pictures of them. Like they were like this perfect couple. And then she started running me down. She was like, how many sites are you on? I said, well, none, <laughs> you know, I'm not at any dating site. Um, she's like, well, that's your problem. That's why you're single and you're not going to be finding anyone unless you get on these sites. And I said, um, like, I didn't like, it's just, it wasn't for me. Cause even then, like I wasn't part of the CSC community then, but even then I knew I was looking for something deeper. Like I wanted that friendship. Y'all were talking about like something else, not these criteria. And then, um, anyway, long story short, she basically, um, after a year, cause they were, they were going to get married. Like it was like serious, like it was headed towards marriage. Well, after about a year, maybe like a year and a half, she called me crying on the phone and I said, well, what happened? And she said, oh, well, um, you know, I found out through Facebook that he, he, he was acting like he was single on Facebook um, and that through Facebook, through a friend's friend, um, she found out that he actually had another woman on the side and it sounded like the woman was the main person, main girl for him. And my friend was a side girl for him or something like it was something crazy. And I said, well, are you going to tell her? Are you going to tell her the truth? She's like, no, I'm not going to tell her because it's not my place to tell her. Um, but then, I mean, I, I just kind of, I felt bad for her, but at the same time I was like, well, then all these like income brackets, like all these things are going to give you a guy, a specific kind of guy, but it may not be what you want you know so no that was good i really love that and I, I think that's a good way to honestly segue into a lot of what stan has to say and i think i want to say one thing before we lean over there because i like what you just said elizabeth because it bounces off of what tawana said and mm-hmm. i think again it leans into what stan said and yeah. i think again we need to talk about this piece this is the one piece before we go to the table because Stan is at the table. He's sitting at the head of the table. He's ready to talk about the table. <laughs> and Elizabeth is talking about, okay, dating sites and, you know, the stress of being out there and finding your right position. But one of the things that I want to talk about, and I've kind of talked about it a little bit uh, throughout this particular, um, you know, meeting, but I talked about it a lot when we first started CSC, is it's about, a lot of it is about energy. Yeah. And sometimes we have to check our own energy because what we're attracted to is the very thing that will hurt us. And a lot of ways, mm-hmm. Tashawn kind of mentioned it a well. So I'm trying to put all these pieces together. So like Tashawn talked about, okay, like who you can see sexually, who you can see, you know, in the bedroom. And she's being real. Okay, let, let, let's be real for a second. Okay, if y'all have ever met Tashawn, Tashawn is a beautiful woman. She's absolutely mm-hmm. a gorgeous woman. Okay. Yeah. But there is a friendship between me and Tashawn. Okay. You know, there's just a straight up friendship between us. And, you know, like she said one time, she was like, Joseph, I see you as a brother. And honestly, I see Tashawn as a sister, you know, just to be real. But I cannot say that she's not an extremely attractive woman. Okay. So why isn't that connection there? That connection's there Mm -hmm. because we don't share that energy, that side of that energy. Right. OK, and that, that's logical. Everybody can kind of get that. Well, there are women that I am la- I'm logically attracted to. 
when I get around them, they don't know why they're attracted to me and I don't know why I'm attracted to them. I actually had a woman recently that literally the vibe between me and her was so strong, I was shaking. <laughs> and I did not even understand it because I was like, this girl, because I was like the woman in front of me, I'm thinking, well, she's not as attractive as I like. You know, she was kind of young. I'm like, okay, what is going on? But the vibe had me shaking. Okay, that is how strong that vibe was. But what we have to do, and especially I want a lot of the women to really pay attention to, to go back to Tawana's point, is if you are constantly in these situations where you might find yourself attracted to bad guys, again, you got to be honest about it. You know, you got to be honest and say, I am attracted to the fixer upper. I am attracted, not saying you, Tawana, I'm just saying women in general are men. Yeah, I'm, I'm not, I don't, I don't do projects. I don't no, do projects. Like, let me make I'm sure attracted. I don't, I rebuke that. Okay. I rebuke that. I don't like that guy. I told you, if he looks the, the glass nerdy part, but and I, I'm about character and respect and, and that's it. Like, well, no, I'm, I'm down with that. I'm, I'm not saying like you literally, I'm just saying it more from a perspective of, we want to make sure that we're attracting the right people. 